guest today on Have a Tai Chi Podcast, episode number two, is Gene Tashida. Gene is a recent senior master sergeant select for EOD, and he is within weeks of going home to see his family for the first time in almost a year. He is also one of my favorite people at Kunsan. We have many similar interests in life, sports, and recreational activities. We both find enjoyment through leadership books and discussions. This similar passion is what led our paths to cross through a mutual friend, Eric Pace. Gene established a unique leadership discussion forum here at Kunsan Air Base called the Air Power Leadership Academy. For 10 weeks, NCOs and senior NCOs meet to discuss fundamental topics to share experiences and develop leadership skills. I was fortunate enough to sit in on the first course, and Gene gave me the opportunity to be the director for the second course as he's off to Langley Air Force Base. We share whiskey during our conversation, one bottle I gifted to him for making senior, and another bottle a friend of mine brought back to me from his trip from Japan. About 80 minutes into our conversation, I assumed we had both said everything we wanted to say. In this moment, Gene reminds me why I'm fond of this podcast platform. I start moving towards wrapping things up and he stops me, offering more. The next 60 minutes, Gene shares some of his private stories that he wouldn't tell most people within the first few months of meeting them. Even I was unaware of the experiences Gene endured during his deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan. Gene shares stories about his worst days on the job. He shares an experience that most of us will fortunately never have to experience for ourselves. I hope you enjoy Have a Tai Chi Podcast, episode number two, Blowing Things Up with Gene. Gene Cheeto clapped for 32 seconds. I'm going to include that. <laughs> Just that I got dumbass clapping for <laughs> three minutes before we started this. All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Have a Tai Shoe Podcast, episode number two. I got a good friend of mine, Gene Tashida, here. What up? What up? What up? What up? Uh, yeah, he's, he's an EOD guy. I'm just excited to talk to him. He, he's gotten me into the Air Power Leadership Academy, which I kind of talked about on my last episode, but he was the one that founded it here at Kunsan, and uh, now I got him here. I'm really excited to talk to you. I know you leave soon. Uh, it's really cool that you did EOD. I know that's, that's a high washout rate, and that's something that I think is going to be really interesting to talk about. It's one of those jobs a lot of people join to do, and then about, what, 90% of them don't get to do? Uh, yeah, it ranges, but yeah, it's up there. Cool. So we'll t- I don't want to talk about that, uh, your, your family. And yeah, like let's just get into it. Start starting with starting with EOD. So you joined, and nine out of ten people don't make it. Uh, so yeah, correction on the numbers a little okay. bit, but um, when I went through, it was about a seventy percent washout rate, and uh, uh, it was like I would say a little bit higher. So we have a preliminary school mm-hmm. um, in Texas, and then you go to the Joint Service School with all four services down in uh, Eglin, Florida, and. Uh, I, my class started with 22 airmen straight out of boot camp. Um, sometimes if there's a retrainee, they'll jump into one of those classes. Mm-hmm. Mine didn't have one. And we ended with four. So 22 students there, four of them went to Florida. That's under 20%. So there's math involved, right? Um, <laughs> uh. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, two of those four graduated EOD school in Florida. So that's under 10%. Yeah. For my class. Um, it according, varies. Right? According to my research, that is 9%. <laughs> sounds good. That's under 10. I was uh, right. Don't I'll correct it. me. <laughs> it sounds good. But I kind of skipped over the part where you introduce yourself. You're EOD. You got a family. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Um, and I, I could, uh, introducing myself is hard cause I could talk yeah. about a lifetime of stuff, but yeah, no, um, summary, uh, wave tops, if you will. Uh, I'm 35. I was a military brat. My dad was air force ammo, did 22 years, retired when I was seven, moved back to his home minnesota when i was seven and then uh uh, yeah i was raised five miles outside of a a town of 700 until i turned 17 and graduated high school and then i joined the air force and been doing eod ever since been married uh it'll be seven years in uh i don't know a couple of weeks actually the day i i leave coons on it'll be wait in 11 days. We're going to have to edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sherry. Yeah. What's my wife's birthday? <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> um, yeah, Sherry. Um, I've been married to my wife, Sherry, for almost seven years. I could have just said that. Yeah. Um, and I've got two kids, a four-year-old and a six-year-old, uh, daughters, which is uh, a whole new set of world challenges. Yeah, I bet. Like, as a guy with no kids, I sometimes struggle to take care of myself. And then I see these people younger than me, even, that have, like, these, this whole family, and I just don't know how they're doing it. And 
Yeah, man. It's, it's like, it's one of those things you don't have a choice. Yeah. Like, like some people want to be parents and they want that life. But like when they're like 21 hours a day of no sleep and just like, just zombies and like diapers and like, you know, like it's like, no, nobody's like, Oh, I love that. But I mean, there's some great, great pros to it as well. Like the first time a kid says they love you or they put, mm. they give you a hug or like they just smile a little bit and those little babies are just cute as hell. Like <laughs> it's, it's incredibly connecting to something bigger than you. Like when like you make a human being. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I mean, I've had dogs. And so those kind of greet me with some happiness. Yeah, and it's like the same thing. Potato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's your best moment with with your kids? Oh boy! Besides them saying "I love you," not top moment. Um, so they're they're both uh, they're both wildly different personalities, and I, my wife and I talk about the nature versus nurture mm-hmm. uh, idea all the time. She's she's in her third year of PhD school for being a clinical psych, so um, that that conversation happens. A, more often than it should. Dr. Tashida. Yeah, right. Um, you probably can't ever win then when you argue with her. Oh, I always win. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, my, my favorite, my most favorite moment. Um, I think uh, for my older daughter, uh, it would be when I got back from my last deployment because, like, uh, I, I'm gone a lot for work, travel a lot, and uh, – this last one, she was just kind of old enough to like really, really know I was gone and recognize internally how long I was gone. And like she saw me and like uh, ran across an airport parking lot and like almost got hit by a few cars, but like didn't care. It was just like, <laughs> and my wife's like, stop, like trying to, you know, don't die, kid. But um, she just didn't care and she just like hugged me harder than ever and it was amazing. <laughs> um the little one uh Camille she's uh she's crazy <laughs> um I I don't know if I there are any like standout moments because she's she's such a like when I left like I, I've spent five months of the last two years home with my family um so it's been been kind of challenging that way but uh like I don't know she's a cool kid <laughs> She'll love hearing that 14 years from now. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did dad say about you as a four-year-old? You're cool. Yeah. Uh, she is She is extremely resilient in her love and devotion for me because she doesn't have any concept of time. Mm. Like, so my wife could say, daddy's going to be home in three weeks or daddy's been gone for 10 months. And she's like, so he's at work? So he's, he's going to come home soon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like every time we FaceTime or whatever, she's just like, Hey, like, <laughs> like nothing has changed for her. It's crazy. Two weeks, two weeks. She'll have you back. Yeah. Can't wait. Cool. So thanks for sharing your family and self just about EOD. So I find that really interesting. Anytime you're doing a job that, well, the new mass says 91% people fail out of. Sure. <laughs> that, that, but that's one, right? It's the average of oh, 91% animals. peanut sure. butter spread. EOD sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. So 91% just like that training has got to be rigorous. Uh, I guess I always kind of have like a, whenever I meet like combat controllers and it's kind of embarrassing to admit, but when you see them and you got a beret, you know, it's like, man, they're like manly dudes or even, even EOD is, is similar in PJs. You kind of have like a little boy crush on them. And so when you <laughs> see it, you, you think like, man, that guy's special. And then, so like when you, when you started up ALA, I was like, well, an EOD guy's doing that. Like, is that normal for those guys to be doing all these outside of their own job? I don't even know what an EOD guy does at work. Like I know you guys blow shit up, but yeah, like what's, that's a lot of questions. Or what's a daily life, a life for an EOD guy on the regular? Uh, not as exciting as it might sound. Hmm. We have a lot of dudes who uh, come in, they, they sign the dotted line, they go through EOD school, and they get to a unit, and then they're, they're taken aback because uh, the recruiter's job is to get you into the Air Force, um, and the, the pipeline's job is to get you through the pipeline. Um, once you're at the unit, um, we still, honestly, I love this job, uh, but it's all about managing expectations, right? Um, for a while there, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan wars were like the thing. And uh, like we were doing the Army's job because they couldn't support with their manpower. So um, a lot of us like really latched onto that. You know, we, uh, we learned a lot of lessons, uh, paid in blood for some of them. And so like when you lose friends and you devote a huge part of who you are to that, um, it was a huge culture shift for us. 
And so, uh, we get a lot of guys who like, you know, they read the, the bronze star or silver star highlights and see this guy getting a purple heart. And that's what they thought they were joining up to do. And then the wards dwindled down and the activity just wasn't there to require our presence. And we're reshifting on other things strategically as a career field. Um, it's hard for a lot of, a lot of the younger guys to take. So, um, imagine, imagine if we were pilots, but we, uh, we maintain our own jet and um, like we, we, we don't have the support. Everything's internal inside of an EOD shop. There's an operation section, training section, supply section, munition section, equipment section. Um, and, and even an admin uh, TO section. So um, you come to the unit, you have to concurrently, advance your EOD skills, get your five level, get your seven level, uh, go TDY all the time while also, um, keeping McT in check. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I am, I yeah. am the uh, McT boy okay. for my squadron. So, right. Learning policy, re- learning how to write MFRs, be an NCO or be an airman, um, inventorying millions of dollars of equipment, um, all that stuff. So like, and if you're at a base that doesn't have a, uh, so, some bases don't have fighters. So there's less, aircraft incidents or IFEs. Some bases don't have large ranges to go to. Some of them are only limited to a pound and a quarter. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of, you know, experiences may differ. Some airmen go to Nellis as their first base where they have every fighter jet imaginable and they're uh, going on emergency responses all the time and clearing the ranges all the time and blowing, like, blowing up bombs upon bombs upon bombs, and it's it's a great time. Um and then at the end of the day, they still come back and they have to do all the same equipment stuff, but there's purpose attached to it. Right. Where uh, another airman uh, goes to name a base uh, without that mission and a smaller range, and they go out and they blow stuff up every month, but it's not it's not as it does it lacks variety, but also uh, when they're inventorying all the equipment and all that stuff, um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have anything connected to their mission per se. How often do you blow stuff up here? At least monthly. What are the odds of some regular dude like me who just knows an EOD guy who wants to go watch or maybe even help blow something up? Um, if it's connected to the mission, then... It's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I was trying to give you an out or an in, but... Um, very connected. Yeah. Um, so that, that was uh, story time. If if we're just oh, that's, that's yeah. it. all right. So uh, uh, I, w- I won't I won't go super into detail, but um, like everybody needs something from finance or MPS, right? Uh, nobody needs anything from us unless it's like a dire emergency. Um, otherwise, we're just there. But um, in order to get the stuff we need need done from people, um, there's there's that networking there's that partnerships relationships there's there's an exchange of something and something that we used to do a lot was take people out um to our ranges and be like hey uh you want to come check this out and then you make a friend and then they can hook you up or whatever it's how you get stuff done networking it's a form of currency and in 2010 iraq uh some guys miscalculated some stuff um on base and uh ended up um killing an airman who they had brought out to the EOD range. And that totally uh, revised and revamped a lot of the protocol and procedure that we uh, we associate with taking people out to the range. It's very, very deliberate on who's allowed to go. Uh, you know, there's casuals and visitors, and they're, those are defined by two separate things. Um, so if, if somebody has a purpose for that mission, like if uh, ammo guys need to bring stuff out there, then they can be out there. Mm-hmm. Um, if we need fire out there for safety, then fire can be out there. Um, and it, yeah, does that make sense? It does. So yeah, that, that makes sense after that incident in 2010 to not just let people go hang out there. Cause right. that sounds like a fun Saturday or Thursday thing to get out of work and do. Right. Uh, you, you mentioned working with the army. Is that, how was that? I did. I thought you said you, uh, they, I guess the army didn't have enough to support out. Oh yeah. So, um, that was, uh. Uh, regarding Iraq and Afghanistan, um, I, I've worked with, like, you name it. Um, I've worked with the Danes, the French, the Germans, the Poles, uh, the British a lot, um, the United States Army, the Marine Corps. Uh, 
a little bit of the Navy in the admin sense, but um, never operationally. Um, yeah, so like each country kind of had a command that was in charge of the EOD side. So uh, they were up there talking to the other command people. And uh, that was almost always Army because they owned the ground. And uh, there was some good and some bad. Yeah. <laughs> Logistically, the, the way the Army handles explosives issue, it's awesome. Um, cause like with us, we have to basically, we sign it out and then we blow, blow it up or blow, blow some of it up and we have to return stuff and then fill out paperwork for what we disposed of. Um, where the army, they're just like, sign the dotted line, here you go. And it's off the yeah. books. So blow it all up. That sounds a lot, a lot better. So like, yeah, army, army ranges, if you will, for, uh, for like CADM or shooting, um, and like they blow through all the all so what's, the ammo. What's the ideal best day on the job for you? Like, what do you look forward to every year? Or like, what, is there anything? Well, annually, like yeah. I, I don't know if there's a recurring thing that I'm like, yay, it's this day. <laughs> we get um, to blow the biggest bomb up as fast as we can. I don't know, like something to get excited about. So I, I've experienced a lot of things. So it's it's it kind of the the uniqueness um, degrades after time, you know, it becomes less of a novelty. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, like the, the first time you go on an aircraft crash, you're like super overwhelmed. Yeah. And then the next time you're like, I got this. Yeah. And then a few times later, you're just like, oh, I, yeah. w- I wish these same people didn't make these same mistakes. Not talking about the, the flyers or the pilots right. or the maintainers, but the people on the ground, uh, remedying the crash. Um, so yeah, uh, honestly, like as, where I'm at now, I'm I'm been in almost 18 years. Um, I would say the things that I look forward to is watching, watching the guys grow and learn. Um, that's like a huge when I when I'm out there training with them and they're learning something that I learned back when I was a E5 and but like I see them and I like I keep my mouth shut and I let it happen and then I'm like, did you consider doing this? And they're like, oh. Huh. <laughs> like that that's knowing knowing that there's a future behind me is like the coolest part of the job right now. Like and, a good future. Yeah. So I really enjoy that side of like life teaching people things or like that side of the Air Force is teaching. And that's like a, a very specific trait you have to let them like how you said it, you let them fuck it up. And then once they fuck it up, you ask them, Did you consider this? And then they get both experiences. They learn how to actually do it because you're telling them and are giving them another chance and you let them actually fuck it up. To where they know, oh, I can't do this. Because if I'm about to fuck it up, and Jean, she's like, huh, you can't do it that way. That won't work. I, like, don't know why it won't work. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And that's something that I like, really admire, like, in, in, like, teaching is people who do that. And, and so for when, when you said that, I was like, oh, I've got to comment on that. Because that's, like, yeah. a very unique trait. A lot of people skip. It's it's empowering to be like, nope, don't do it that way. Like, people enjoy cutting oh, you yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and we're empowered. Um to do that, especially in a, in a job that's very safety centric, Mm -hmm. everybody, you know, everybody's a sensor kind of thing. Like it, and that happens, we get a safety brief before every explosive operation, you know, like it doesn't matter what rank you are. Everybody is a safety observer. And, you know, if you see something, say something. Yep. And, uh, like, I, I don't think I do it deliberately, but I, I often, I often hold or reserve my communication strategically. Sometimes um, I can tell you a story of what something that happened when I was an airman here in a second, but after I finish this thought, um, yeah, I will say being there as again, someone who's been in for coming up on 20 years, uh, that did not come naturally that, that need or that ability to hold my tongue when I see somebody about to screw something up took a really long time. Yeah. Because when I was younger, it was reinforced to never do that. You don't screw up the job. You don't let somebody fail. You don't let the team fail. You don't allow that to happen. So I had to like reverse train myself into that. Um, but no, uh, something that happened as an airman, and that was like a couple weeks on the job. My first base was Nellis. Uh, go figure. I was talking it up, right? Um but now we were out at our pro range doing some uh, counter IED training and we got our sweet robots and uh, one of the guys drove over, over a rock the wrong way and threw uh, a track off the robot, right? It's got little little tank tracks on it, if you will. And uh, they're like, I don't know, maybe a football field away from the guy controlling it and they got radios and they're sitting there talking to him. Um, hey, uh, go forward a little bit, go backward a little bit and they're like trying to reattach this track Think of it like a bike chain almost. 
And, uh, like I sat there and I, and like, I grew up in Farmville, USA and I'm like pretty mechanically inclined. Like I can be like, you know, just like rain manning the dots together. And, uh, uh, yeah. So I sat there and I was like a brand new A1C and I'm like, staff sergeants are failing at this. And I'm like, uh, do I, do I say something? And like <laughs> I, I, yelled at. I let like four people fail. And then I'm like, do you guys uh, mind if I like, try a little bit or like yeah please jeez I'm like okay what polite staff sergeants <laughs> yeah and uh yeah i, I did put, took out my bayonet and like uh, go forward go back all right fix you know and uh but that, that was one of those empowering moments where uh had i not done that maybe my confidence would have been slower yeah. to come in kind of thing so let me ask you this after you did that and they let you do it what did they say once you fixed it did they uh, shrug you off or did they make you feel fucking great uh you don't, do you remember? <laughs> so a little bit. I, I I don't remember what was said per se, but I remember how I felt. Yep. Um. That, that was one of those uh, growth growth situations that I I can like visually remember. Mm -hmm. Um. Nobody. So I, I will say this: we uh we like to not be super nice to each <laughs> we other. We like to not appreciate people. It's our culture. <laughs> I don't want to say that because that's wrong. <laughs> um. You're saying it. Yeah. So like as a culture, we don't like to uh give anyone a big ego. Oh, right? That's a good way to put you, it. You don't want to make anyone be too cocksure of themselves because then they'll be dangerous. And that has led us to building a culture of nothing but assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so even if somebody if somebody is giving you a great compliment and you've done a great thing and a great job, like somebody's gonna <laughs> Cause somebody's gonna level yeah. that out. We, we were talking about McT earlier. That's like a little checklist that all like senior enlisted leaders have to like follow, make sure they do it. That's gonna be on your checklist. Like, did anyone give? Did you allow any compliments? Yeah. If yes, mark it an observation. <laughs> right. No observations allowed. Yeah. No. There was one dude. Uh, I remember Luke Riker. He uh, he got out um, maybe after eight or eight or ten years in. He was an NCO when I was an airman there, and he was like, oh, man, you, 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 good work, whatever. <laughs> and then, like, somebody else is – Start melting. Somebody else said something rude. Yeah. Um, but I, I was at A1C, brand new, at a, a massive VOD shop. It was pretty common. Um, yeah, we, we, we are notorious for being horrible to each other in, in the guise of uh, keeping each other humble and, <laughs> and humor. Yeah, <laughs> that's got to be a lot of fun. Like, you just solved this thing no one no one could solve it. <laughs> Instead of saying, good job, young man, like, they're just like, hey, you just did it sooner, you idiot. You're right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a culture I could really get behind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we go on, I'm going to open this bottle of whiskey that my uh, coworker here, Grady, Robert Grady, thanks for buying this for me in Japan. He said it was a, a nice, expensive bottle. But he could have very well got it from a Seven Eleven for three bucks, and I wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't be any of the wiser. Yeah. So, me and Gene are both whiskey guys, so we're gonna try this out. Hell Thanks, yeah. Robert. Whenever you're, whenever you're ready for your serving. Um, in a minute. There you Help yourself. Thank you. I'll try to wait for you, but no promises. And, and si since we're on the topic of whiskey, a good friend of mine also got me this as I was recently presented with a uh, a line number for senior. And uh, he said it was the best uh, Japanese whiskey he's he's found here, um, and he put a note on it. Um, says says some very kind things, and that guy's name was uh, John Taishu. Oh man, that's probably a swell dude. Yes. See, I knew you never get compliments. So I was like, he finally made E eight. It's just a time where I can <laughs> give him some recognition. Right. Yeah, I was looking for some kind of like backhanded compliment <laughs> or like some kind of degradation in the note, and I, I was confused. Wait a Is it poisoned? <laughs> <laughs> Have you drank it all yet? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't found the bottom. So that, that's I think that's a, a big fucking deal. That E eight is the hardest rank to make. So now that, now that you've made E eight, uh, and I know you're a guy who, when I you gave you that, or like even acknowledged you the day you made it in a Air Power Leadership Academy class, you're like, eh, I'm not really into. To recognition, which is yeah, makes a little more sense since you never got it for eighteen years. <laughs> but like, how's I, it feel? So I, I got it a lot, believe it or not. Um, I, I've I've been recognized uh, at, at fairly high levels for for plenty of things, and I've, I've gotten awards and stuff over my career. But it's still, uh, I mean that that that'll take take like now. Let's bring a psychologist into the class because I, I don't know what I'm about to talk about. 
Um, but how I was raised, right? Like the community, it was really small. Um, you know, uh, Scandinavian farm people, uh, like work ethic is everything. That's how you're defined as a human being. If there's anything to be done and you're not contributing, like it's going to take you months to recover from that socially. That's the, that's what it felt like growing up. Um, additionally, my dad, he was, uh, he was a really hard worker. Um, but he, he, he was always, always good with that. Like same, same kind of mentality, like great job, but you could have done better. Yeah. Like the, like there was never any, like, Hey, you did amazing at that hands down. Nothing bad to say. There was always a bit of criticism, which looking back, I always really appreciated it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, so I've kind of, I've, I've used that as a strength. Um, I, I think that's, that's one of the reasons I've been able to be successful in certain areas is because I was raised in that atmosphere and by those people. But, um, yeah, I, I, so I see praise and accolades as like, I, but I can do better. Don't, don't, don't applaud too loud. Don't applaud too much. Like give me something to work on. And so when people come at me like, Hey, you're amazing. I'm like, no, I'm not. Don't say that. I'm going to get lazy. (laughs) Yeah. Perfect. Perfect mindset for being in that 9% career field. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'll stop saying it. I just, (laughs) I don't know what it's not 10%. And then we did the math. It was, it was, it was under 10%. I don't know what the numbers are now. Yeah. (laughs) I I do think it's cool. Yeah. Megan E8. That that's huge. For real. Congrats. I'm glad glad that bottle meant a little bit for you. I'm glad you got recognition after 18 years. So I don't know how it actually, I do know how that one is. But I'm excited for you to try this one. I'm not gonna lie; it is extremely smooth and dangerous. So awesome! Yeah, yeah. I'm well, a I'll get after fan of it. So, so thanks, Grady. <laughs> Japanese can make whiskey. So Air Power Leadership Academy is something you were a cod. You were never a student. You just went straight cadre for it, right? Correct. Where at? Where were you a cadre? Uh, I was first exposed to the program um, at an undisclosed location. Okay. In uh, Afcent command. That's cool that we have that out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was uh, it, it was the command chief at that location. Um, he was a uh, a cadre and had helped like at one location and it helped stand it up at another. Um, and so while he was deployed, he was like, "I want to get this going." And uh, yeah, it, it turned out to be an incredible experience, and I've been lucky to be a part of it for sure. Yeah. I, I feel the same way, and, and for those that don't already know, like Gene was the one that started at Kunsan and then did one class and then picked me to lead it once he's leaving, which has been great. Like, I've always thought I enjoy running things more than just being a part of it. It's, you know, just, and now that you've let me do it and make my own decisions, just like running that class, seeing people grow, ask questions, teach, learn. As we were talking about earlier, it's really fun to teach people these concepts and things that I've read. And I think, honestly, I bet I learn more teaching it than I do the students do. It's like incredibly listening. developmental to yeah. just to be part of it. Even if you sat in the room for all 10 weeks and didn't say a word, you would learn a ton. I agree. Yeah. And then it's just really impact. Like all these concepts I have in my head that I've like kind of left my mind, they'll like reappear during conversation. And then I repeat them and I'm like repeating them throughout the rest of my weeks. Like as, as if I'm like a John Maxwell expert <laughs> on leadership <laughs> and I'm just like, this is how it is. Yeah. And it, it's a really cool experience. So if no one's ever been a part of Air Power Leadership Academy, if that opportunity presents itself, like that is something you have to get into. But it's been great. All right. Next question I want to ask you. All um, right. I know you're big on different leaders. I don't know how you are about celebrities and sports figures, but if you could ha- meet and have lunch with one person, so two people, one that's currently still alive, you get to have lunch with someone that's still alive, and then okay. we're going to ask you, you get to have lunch with someone who's passed away. Who would these two people be? Okay. Uh, allow me to take a thinking drink. <laughs> I'll join you. I should have also asked you why you started ALA. That's something I'm curious of for you to just... Let's do that first and then move on. What do you think? <laughs> Why did you start ALA? Okay. What Wait, made you want to do that? Here? Yeah. Um, so it was, uh, I've got a lot of incredible, incredible things to say about that program. Um, it was the, it was kind of the, the spark that ignited my trajectory into being like, I don't want to say a leader, but somebody who, who is focused on leadership. Sure. Um, and looking at things in a new light and being more patient and 
being less emotional and ego driven and like it's given me a lot of a lot of great tools and um although i i've i've thrived in the uh in the pme realm um awards wise and experience wise and networking wise like the content of those environments um i i think has has something to be desired Mm -hmm. and ala is it's not pme and, and that's what makes it awesome like uh like growth happens sitting around a fire pit at two in the morning with two people who are just like not thinking straight, but talking about some really deep stuff. I agree. And, uh, so people, you know, like it, it, it has that environment where you, you lower your inhibitions, there's no filters and you just talk about some heavy shit and, and you get to learn, like you're exposed to people in a manner that you'd never be exposed to. And the, the air force is so huge and uniquely diverse And there there are some people who go into their specialty and like maybe interact with one or two other specialties their entire career. Um, And some people uh, interact with everybody like customer service people, finance, for instance, they see everyone because everybody needs money stuff, but nobody ever gives anything to finance. No, nobody ever, you know, says genuinely, thank you. Not often. I would think like, um, I even like my first, when I was doing my voucher here, I sat down with the guy and he was just in the world's worst mood. And, uh, I feel like I had the same, <laughs> same experience. Yeah. Man, I'm so and, and like, this guy. so like I, I just talked to him and probed a little bit and like, I finally like started talking to this guy for real. And, and he like, kind of like, yeah, this place is just beating me up. And he was down about this and down about that. I'm like, well, like, Hey, like if you ever need to talk, you know, like, that, that kind of stuff where I, I started to value, like there was a point in my career where I would have just been like, give me what I need. Give me what I need. Give me what I need. Thank you for almost doing it right. Bye. You know, mm-hmm. not, not so overtly dickheadish, but um, you know, like maybe my internal model monologue was doing that um, where now I, I give people uh, a lot more benefit of the doubt, so on and so forth. And I, I feel like so many people um, from every specialty, could use exposure to that environment. So, and, and like ALA is like a drop in a pond, right? The class sizes are small, but mm-hmm. the impact is huge on those individuals and they're going to go out and they're going to lead and they're going to change and they're going to kill it. So, um, I, I feel like everywhere I go, I want to, I want to do that more. Yeah. I want to see it everywhere. Like paint the air force with the ALA. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. It's such like a rare environment where you actually sit or sit around and be like, how can I be a better person and make people around me like achieve their goals? And like, that is the environment. Mm-hmm. It's almost like we're just sitting around. Like if we like was a chess club and just sat around and played chess, we'd all get really good at chess. Cause we're doing it two right. hours a week, every week for sure. And we're talking about leadership concepts and sharing experiences where people fuck you over or you fuck someone over. Those are the ones I like the most where people are like, here's how I fucked up. I get really excited about those. <laughs> like when, cause people don't ever want to admit that. They yep. always want to, like, we judge so many other people on when they fuck things up, and we'll never just be like, oh, here's the time I fucked up. Yep. And so it's re- when those stories are shared, they're, like, my favorite. <laughs> That's how you get my vote for, <laughs> for for being a fucking great student is just, yeah, t- tell me how you fucked up. Let it all hang out. Yeah. All right. So I don't know if you, that was enough time for you to think. And also, what do you, okay. think, you think about right. this? Let me take another drink. It's really good. Pretty good? Yeah. Should we mix it with Coke? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have this chief, Chief Harper. That dude got me on into whiskey, into Basil Hayden. And another one, a friend of mine, Seller, Chris Seller, another mass sergeant, we would always share a, like whenever I come to his house, we would drink whiskey and I would bring Basil Hayden and mix it with Coke and he would like tell the chief about it. And the chief was like, in bed, like upset about it. Like, <laughs> he couldn't believe that I would do that. <laughs> like you have that same look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, it's so like, funny to me that we're not inviting John. Yeah, back. it offends so many people. But like, man, it's just it's nice to have a ri- a, a fancy whiskey with a coke. But yeah, I just I guess it offends people. That's <laughs> something we got to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that such a burden? Yeah. All I, right. Best dead leader. Maybe those people need ALA. <laughs> um. That's the last right. thing about ALA: drinking while you're learning leadership. Right. Like there's how you say it's not PME. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's drink. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, 
we had it when uh, when I was deployed, so that wasn't wasn't really an option. But the <laughs> fact that we can do it here is amazing. Like full support. <laughs> Don't go ALA at Afton. <laughs> Wait till you get back home. Right. Not and no, I'd say yeah. Take advantage of that opportunity anytime. But all right. So have lunch with one person who's alive and one person who's dead. Yep. Who'd you pick? That is that is extremely difficult. There's just so many options. There are a lot of options. How many dead people are there? A few. <laughs> yeah, there's at least six. There's a few. Um, alive? Um, Mattis. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. General Mattis? Yeah. Oh, mad dog. Uh, <laughs> I think he doesn't like being called that. Is that, I remember, I've seen like an article that said like, don't he, call me mad dog. Yeah, he, he wasn't a fan of that one. He, <laughs> he was a uh, chaos, I believe. Yep. Um, call sign chaos. You read that book? Name of his book. Yeah, it's good. That, that, that specific, that book I read, uh, I read twice, um, in the span of about two months and wow. I absolutely loved it. I've never done that with any book. Audio books, man. Okay. I yeah. Think, yeah. I could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was spending a lot of time on the road, so yeah. I was crushing books. <laughs> There's a thousand books out there. I'm going to read this one again. Right. Um, Could you not afford another book? No, I mean, you still pay <laughs> for the uh, for the digital ones. Right. Well, I'm saying, yeah, but you listen to it twice. As, like, I have to listen to this one again. Oh, no, it was good. It, like yeah. it, like a book that you uh, you keep on your shelf versus donate. I like, agree. It, you know, like yeah. there's a couple of books that I've bought in several copies of because I – I try and feed them to people. Yep. Um, uh, but yeah, no, that, that book, uh, that book was awesome. A lot of his, uh, his concepts, his demeanor, his, his, uh, his personal constitution, the things that drive him, his professionalism, his, his just outlook on life. I would love to love to pick his brain. Um, that'd be pretty awesome. Specifically one, 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 uh, lesson that I, uh, I was in, <laughs> I'll never forget it. I was driving to lunch and I heard it and I, I was trying to not to get into an accident, so I like hit hit the rewind button and drove some more. Hit the rewind button and drove some more. And I listened to the same clip, and I I got through the drive through into the drive through lane, and I was like, okay. And then I like wrote down what was being said. Okay, what was um, it? So it, it was uh, while well, I was talking about when he was like the commander of NATO forces, and he uh, had to fire like a Lithuanian general general or something. And the guy was just an absolute massive dickhead. Um, and uh, just yelling at his people and saying, do this, do that, da 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 And he kind of explained the backstory, but the, the quote that like summed up everything personally was, uh, don't let your passion for excellence destroy your compassion for people mm-hmm. as a leader. And like as soon, as soon as I heard that, like especially the first time and also the 11th, um, I uh, uh, like – I was like, that was totally me at various points in yeah. my young NCO days where I was just like, go do this or, you know, because like I, I have, I have, I have strong work ethic. I care a lot about doing a great job and, and therefore I need everyone around me at the time. I needed everyone around me to have the same attitude and, yeah. uh, overtly even, you know, I don't know what's behind the scenes and I don't know what they did last night. And I, you know, like there's so many other things going on, but yeah, so that, that was a great quote that really stuck with me, but yeah, that, so yeah, general Mattis would be, uh, uh, and, and also picking his brain on, uh, uh, his 2016 to 20, 2018 life would be interesting (laughs) because he, he's, he's he's like like changed, changed his tune where he was like a great Marine, uh, you know, like I'm part of this team and we're going to, we're going to get after it. Lethality. And then sound like him. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he went to, uh, like the way he exited office again, great admiration for this guy was super professional. He's like, um, Different you know, views. yep. Uh, he needs somebody who, who, who's better aligned with him and his goals and the strategic initiatives for the United States of America. And then like, a year later or something, there was a video of him that surfaced at some like dinner and he was like cracking jokes about it. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> he's normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so like, I'd like to see behind the curtain on general Mattis. Like, you know, like when, when the, when the suit and the Marine and the Marine, uh, uniform comes off, like who is that guy after he's had like five glasses of scotch? <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have picked him, but that's actually a really great pick. Yeah. I, um, before we get to your dead person, there's a story you once shared a couple months ago at ALA about uh, when you were an asshole, I guess, NCO, you're, almost your words, not mine. Sure. 
uh, where you guys were on a ruck. Maybe you were senior airman, but you were on a ruck and some dude couldn't handle it. And instead of helping him, you were you just you you know what story I'm talking about? I do know what story you're talking about. Yeah, if you would share that and then tell me like how why you were an asshole then and what you would do differently today in the same circumstance. Oh wow, okay, that's 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 getting there. Okay, let's first tell the story. We'll we'll yeah. lead into it. All right, so. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a long time ago. That was uh, in 2009. Um, we went out on a mission. We went out on a mission to, uh, uh, let me let me, let me me gather myself. Um, all right, yeah, 2009 Afghanistan. It was a flyaway mission, which means uh, no trucks or nothing. You just get in a helicopter and you go, go to a place and uh, you got your gun and your backpack, basically. Um, so... We uh we get out in the army unit we were working with um they had they had all kinds so to speak uh some of the guys were seasoned and professional some of the guys were young and green and hungry and some of the guys were were idiots and or assholes um yeah there, there's a few sub stories in this day um but like you could tell like you you get out of the back of the helicopter and like the guys who it's like their first mission, they like come out of the back of the helicopter, like guns up looking for enemy threats and like, Oh, like, <laughs> and like the guys who've been in country or that their fifth deployment, they're just like stroll out like, Hey, you got a cigarette? <laughs> like, let's go. And, uh, uh, it's kind of funny, but yeah, so we're, uh, you know, you don't want to, Depending on the mission, you don't want to land right next to where you want to go. Um, and we landed a, a ways out, and we had to walk along this ridge to our objective. And even at that point, because we're kind of uh, pending on pending on the operation again, uh, we're uh, a lot of the times considered like an asset. Like you don't you don't subject uh, us to unnecessary harm in a certain way, because if we all die and then you run into IEDs, then what are you going to do? So like a, fr- from a command and from a C2 perspective, uh, we don't, we're not always like front, front door kicker. Right. Dudes, right. And very rarely are we, or should we be, um, in most scenarios. So, uh, anyway, so we're like in the middle of the stack. And then once we got, got to the objective, we just kind of like hung back with the, with the C2 and waited for, people who are, here, who are up there doing stuff to uh, call us up if they needed us. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we're walking from where the helicopter dropped us off to this village, maybe a mile. And uh, uh, this was relatively early on in our tour. Um, uh, the guy who was with me uh, wasn't necessarily the fittest guy. He was in, he was in the, he was in the gym every day, arguably more than I was. Um, and, but I, I was in like naturally good shape. So I just neglected my body. Look at me. Right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And so this is kind of, kind of hard to, hard to talk about, but I will. Um, I appreciate it. Like I said, my yeah, favorite yeah. stories are when people say, here's how I fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I had, I'd grown like, and this comes back to a lot of my shortcomings, a lot of, a lot of things that I've grown through as being an adult. Like I, I will I will never say I was awesome, um, like like a hundred percent, right? I, I've always had room for growth, and I always will have room for growth, kind of thing. But like, uh, this is definitely one of those stories that like paints paints a part of me that I I'll just say I was probably ashamed of. Yeah, that's the best way best way to say it. But um, so anyway, we're walking. He uh, he wasn't super in shape, and I was like that hungry dude who's like. Send me on the the biggest baddest missions you got. Like nothing can stop me. I was. Were you still single at the time? Oh yeah, I was an idiot. Um, <laughs> it's weird how single people are more idiotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, we're we're marching. It was it was like a, a pretty steep angled slope. It was like a maybe a, a donkey path or a foot path. But so there was like a little bit of a trail ground in, um, but it was still like a pretty pretty sharp um, drop. And, uh, homeboy was in front of me and, uh, the rocks just gave out like on his left foot, which kicked his right foot out, which planted his ass in his bag right there in the trail. And I was, I was mostly just like, oh, you know, I, 
I don't know if I could verbalize the thought that went through my head at the moment, but I was like, not happy about that. And I could have been a human being and said, Hey bud, let's go. Yep. And, uh, 10 I d- seconds, not even yeah. two. Um, and I just was like upset about what he did by, you know, re- representing me as, as someone who fell over. Right, he, we're all on the team. We all wear the same badge, yeah. and uh, it, it was ego. It was ego, yep. you know, hundred percent. And uh, uh, I just walked right over my teammate in Afghanistan. Oh, like stepped over him. Yeah, like may, maybe maybe around. I don't know if there was enough room. Like it was it was a while back. Um, but yeah, I just like bypassed him and kept going, not even looking back to check on him. Yeah. I mean, there was like 20 dudes behind me and I think the very next army guy was like, Hey bud, let's go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like, uh, that was something that like I felt bad about 20 minutes later and I've continually felt bad every time I've thought about it since. Yeah. Um, something I, I was not super thrilled about. Yeah. That's not why I brought it up to make you feel bad about it. Again, no, but I think, yeah, it's one of those healthy. things. Yeah. Like, and when I see someone fail in those moments, even when I'm stressed and doing a lot of physical activity, there's all those conditions, heat, just take those two seconds. I mean, it'll you, it'll help out a lot. Yep. Did you ever? Did you apologize to that guy twenty minutes later? I don't know if we ever addressed it ever. Dang. Yeah. Do you remember? Don't share it, but do you remember his name? Uh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Like it wouldn't yeah. hurt to send a message about, hey man, I've thought about this for years now. Yeah. I have to tell you, I'm sorry. I'll probably do that. There, there, there's a whole bunch of whole bunch of other stuff with that guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, Story wise. Okay. That's uh, fair. Yeah. Yeah. The EOD culture. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I, I remember share, when you shared that story, again, at Air Power Leadership Academy, I was like, oh, that's a really good one. And in the moment, I wanted to ask you so many questions. It's just other people wanted to talk and get, get other things in. Yeah. You can't do that. So it's cool to have this platform where I can bring you on three months later. But, hey, share this story again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can listen to it over and over for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just recorded now. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But no, that, uh, that guy, uh, we, we shared some experiences later on in that tour. Um that weren't that weren't awesome. That really really bonded us, mm-hmm. and we, we've been really close ever since. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good here. So um, there's a bright side. So too. so yeah, I could probably I could probably stand to flesh out that last little little uh, you know whatever yeah. rotten rotten part of that wound, but uh, yeah, now we're we're cool now. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. So if if that situation happened again today, what would you do? Oh, dude, not be a horrible human being. <laughs> yeah yeah no i would uh i would totally just be like oh hey bud let's let's go you know give is that me, it that, that's simple hand. if i if yeah. we we're marking and i weighed an extra 50 pounds and yeah my right foot steps under a rock and i slip and my left foot flies and i plant on my butt 100 percent. take it go what are you doing uh come up behind you grab you by the shoulder hand weapon pack whatever and be like you good you okay help you up you know let's let's keep on keeping on yeah Simple. It's so simple yeah, to do the man. right thing, which is it's yeah. also simple to do the wrong thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, I'm glad you did it. And again, general. So moving back, General Mattis, great pick. I hadn't considered that. And I kind of like. I might even switch my pick now. Copycat. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's kind of rude. I, this might actually be something I ask everyone because that's like a really good good answer. I w- honestly <laughs> is what I would have picked. And it, now I have three picks. It would have been Joe Rogan or Tom Brady. Now, okay. General Matt, all three of those. If you would let me get yeah. 30 minutes with any of those dudes, I'd be yeah. really excited. There's there's incredible people out there, yep. man. There really is. Um, so I got to do dead person now? Dead person. That That is an enormous, enormous thing. Like, like so I, I, before I get to my pick, let me talk through some, some, some thoughts that were rolling okay, through my that's head. That's fair. If you only um, get one pick at the end. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, but th- there's like, okay, like Gandhi, mm. Jesus. Yep. Um, th- there's like obvious ones, and then you know, like you know, um, <laughs> but, but but then like I, I'm like my mind's like, you know, like always a little bit broken. So I'm like, man, what if I could sit down with Hitler and be like, <laughs> oh, what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's what my pick. Just that wasn't like, my pick. That's my pick. Just now. <laughs> just crush him in the face. Be like, you son of. A- <laughs> Um, you could learn more from that than any other yeah. anybody. Um, all right. So I, I, I has I, to be your pick. No, no. Um, I was, I was thinking either, uh, uh, Stephen Hawking 
or recently passed. Yeah, or uh, uh, MLK. Ooh, MLK, it is because that dude had like crazy, crazy charisma, and he was steadfast, and like moral compass was true north, and like he moved mountains. Yeah, in the right direction. So yeah. like that that like being able to listen to him and, and like. Um, especially with the, the you know, uh, civil unrest and everything that's been going on in the States. Uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, for a lot longer than a year, but it's been highlighted a lot last year. Um, like, I've been doing a lot more research on everything and, like, the the Kings versus the, the Malcolms. Uh, or, uh, did I get that right? Yeah. Um, like, the, the mentality of how to create change for for good. Um like he he was a person that like I want to emulate. Sure, you know, so yeah, under the most difficult time, I think that's a great pick. You know, and what would be really cool, I, I didn't consider MLK either, but like if you brought him back to talk to him for thirty minutes and you just like spent ten of those minutes, watch this highlight reel of President Bar- Barack Obama. What do you think? You uh, know, <laughs> just to see his face to that 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 would be fucking cool. Yeah, like off that alone. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> that would. What, what, I think I assassinated, I know it was April 4th. I don't know why I know that date. It was April 4th. So that was two days ago, mm-hmm. about, about 50 years ago. Sounds right to me. I, I should know the year. I don't. It was 68. Okay. What if we had like a device? That we could show MLK where, hey. I was going to say. <laughs> no, yeah, go for it. Look for it. Uh, that's right. not April. I know it's April 4th. I don't know what year. Sounds right. 50-ish years ago. Um, yeah, that would be cool just alone to see that. Sixty-eight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're good. We're 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 a team. Yeah. You know what I also think is crazy is just having these where you can just get the answer to anything at any minute. Anything. Did you ever hear of Cha Cha? Like the slide? No, <laughs> what was a slide? <laughs> when I was like a three level, like A one C at off at Air Force Base, there's this guy named uh, Alex Wilson, and he had Cha Cha where you could ask any question in the world and text two four two four. Or two four two two four two. I forget the number. Cha cha, sure. whatever that is. So it's three. It's six numbers. It was like you just texted texted someone with the, with yeah, Google. You would, yeah. Well, <laughs> right. But you you would pay cha cha ninety nine cents to get any answer you wanted, and sometimes it would even come back with fucking advertisements. So it's like cha cha just had like Google by the year, and it was like charging people a dollar, and Dude. like it doesn't exist anymore. Oh yeah. Whoever like came up with that is a billionaire now because we were doing it like ten times a day. Like, hey, what question <laughs> are we gonna ask? And Cha Cha would tell you. And your parents were paying the bill. Oh no, I was gonna <laughs> see. I was making a grand a month. <laughs> I was okay. Nice. I could ask a thousand questions every month. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Never. But that's cool. M- so MLK. Yeah. Hitler also would have been great. Yeah. Because like you, you don't think about that, and like mm-hmm. I, I always like try and think of something unique, um, if and when I can. Yeah, like the Hitler pick. Yeah. Like uh, like fuck that guy. But <laughs> um, I don't want to talk to him. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel that way about a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, something big at Air Power Leadership Academy is to have a leadership philosophy. And basically what leadership philosophy is just like your idea on leadership, especially being in the Air Force. That's a big deal. Yeah. You got one? Um, Not a like concrete recitable one. I could say the same. Um, I've uh, I've developed one in writing before. I've uh, spoke to it Um on a, on occasion and it changes. Uh, I don't want to say it's a flavor of the week kind of thing, but you're constantly learning as a leader. So it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna change its path. Yep. Um, but you know, the philosophy is like the, it's the big rocks. It's the, it's the concrete things that you're going to want to, uh, that, that are always going to be there. That's your, that's your leadership constitution, right? What you're going to abide by and do, you know, steadfast. Yep. Um, so you, you want me to, you want me to answer your question now? I, I do. That's, <laughs> I, I want to learn from it. And then if it's good, steal it. Okay. Um, so yeah, this won't be a, a well-delivered speech. Um, Fine. but, uh, my leadership philosophy is, uh, first and foremost, being flexible and adaptable to my collective airmen and the individual airmen. Um, that's a huge thing. And we, we got into this conversation last week of, uh, 
like you need to see every one of your subordinates, like no matter the size of the organization. I'm like, uh, General Brown it doesn't know my goals. <laughs> like, you know, like it, so so there there's there's some uh there's some give and take there, but like uh everybody needs a different a different bit from you as a leader and um you have to be flexible um and adaptable like I, relatable is helpful but like after a certain point like the new tiktok the tiktok 23 like i don't know what that's going to be and i don't care like i i got snapchat back in like 2011 or 12 or 13 and i was like oh this is uh i don't know how to do this and it's still on my phone but like i don't know how to do it <laughs> so, yeah so i feel like i I shouldn't do it. I would judge people if I saw like Snapchat on here. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, why do you have that? Yeah. It's just an app on my phone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So like, uh, but being there for people because people are going to need different things for you. So like as, as a rule, being flexible and adaptable yeah. and you can't, you can't be that and you can't remain being that flexible and adaptable if you don't know your people. So knowing your people and being flexible um, just to, just to start. And you can't get to know your people by saying, Hey, how you doing? And continuing to work, right? You got to have real conversations. You got to take people to lunch. You got to have real human experiences with them go playing sports, uh, going out and seeing them work, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, knowing your people, doing the work to know your people, staying flexible. And then, uh, uh, also never, um, I guess, cause we're all social creatures, right? Uh, I have to remind myself not to uh, bend socially or bend professionally based on social interaction because if you've got 30 people who are going, hey, do this, hey, do this, hey, do this, you know, like it's easy to be like, well, they all want it, Um, like multi-cam ball caps, Um, right? Uh, You you see what I did there? I'm excited for those. Yeah, me too. I I love it. Um, But perception is everything. Um, no, I, uh, it, it, if you know what's right, stick to your guns. So, uh, kind of like maintaining confidence in myself. Um, if I, if I truly know that something's the right decision and just stick to my guns. Yeah. And if it means uh, those, that's really good philosophy. And if it means anything, you do see, you come off as a very confident person, yeah. even, even though I run ALA, I've, I've asked you many things and you'll give me your opinion. I'm like, I'm just going to do it that way. Makes sense. Yeah. So you're doing that. I think knowing your people is, is fundamental and it's a lot of fun to like play sports with your people and yeah. just know them like there's i find a lot of enjoyment in that stuff yeah so your philosophies are a really easy one to, easy one to follow thanks yeah i'll work on it yeah it, it, it <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh yeah i your philosophy could use some improvement it's stupid <laughs> EOD man yeah yeah no I, I mean like it really is like what what are the the big lessons that apply across other lessons you know like what are the, the five to 10 things? Like there's leadership philosophy, there's vision, there's mission statements, there's priorities, like all these things in, in your, uh, I wouldn't say even leadership playbook, but management playbook sure. um, that like they, they change and they're big and like one's, one's a, one's a page long and one's a sentence, yeah. you know? So something I struggle with too is like some days I'm just, I'm not myself. I, I just, I, I'm not ready to, to get to know my airmen. I just have so many things to do and I totally it's wrong, but I don't care when they come in and talk. I'm just like upset and they can see it in my body language, obviously, because I walk out and some days I'm just like, Oh, I'm fucking caught up with work. What do you want to bullshit about? Yeah. But if I can get like, if I was a senior airman going to a senior NCO like that and they're different or Mm -hmm. like they catch them on the wrong way the first time, I'm not going back. Oh yeah. You know? So I like realize that sometimes, especially if it's someone I'm not, don't have a relationship with, I like change and like, okay, now I have to, be specific on how, how I react to this person. And usually once they leave, I actually feel better. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm really glad I did that. I'm in a better mood yeah. behind on time. I have two more questions I want to ask. And before I do, I haven't had that one yeah, since please. 2020. All right, I'm just going to read it since you didn't want to at the beginning. <laughs> Congrats on senior. Well-deserved, and I'm not at all surprised to see you on the list. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. All right. One of the last questions I got. It was a nice gift. Thank you. Oh, um, it was, yeah. It was an easy purchase at the BX. <laughs> I'll compare the two. See who makes better. Korean? Oh, no. It's a Japanese one. Japanese or Japanese? All right. 
So you have to. I'm going to ask you two questions, and you have to answer them within one second. I'm going to ask you one, but it should be it should be natural. All right. Okay, I'll give you two seconds. Sure. Who's Just your best friend in the world? It can't be your wife. David Mooney. David Mooney. Yeah. David Mooney. Who is your best mentor or leader in your entire career? Oh boy. That you can't. No. You can get, you can get eight seconds. You got to pick one. Uh, Grish. Grish. All right. Where's David Mooney at now? Uh, sh- Charleston. Charleston. Ooh, the base? Yeah. Where's Grish? Grish. Grish. Where's Grish at now? Uh, Dover. Dover? Okay. Yeah. So what are the two? What's, before we get in now, the, the time limit's off. Uh, we're, I want to <laughs> talk about each of them, what makes them important to you. Because right. that's something people can learn. Yeah. Why you like these people so much. Yeah. But then also, so but first start, what's the difference between them? Because you would like to hope your best friend like would be a mentor to you. Yeah. Oh, really my nice. brother, my brother would have been a good best friend too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that I, I, I maybe I shouldn't ask other people these questions because <laughs> you're like, oh, so many people are going to be upset. Yeah, yeah right. Them. Right. Um, Just don't tell your brother you were on the podcast. Problem solved. No. Um. So Dave. So differences between the two. Or what? Yep. Um. Oh, there's many. <laughs> go with it height, height. David's, <laughs> da- David's taller age probably a- one. age uh, no David uh, David was I got my f- two first troops at the same time um, and he was one of them and mm. uh, at Nellis no uh, this was at Beale okay a few years back um, and they were both uh, high, high performers very capable um, one was eh, I mean they both had their drawbacks Everybody um, does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but one caused me a lot of problems as a supervisor and uh, one didn't. Was David the one that caused problems? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I was hoping for that. No. He, like, so, so the, uh, so a great example to like explain the difference between those two troops was, uh, I, I got back from a deployment and I, uh, it was like a weekend, right? I got back on a Friday or Saturday and there was a, there was a party that night and, uh, I went to hang out with my, with my guys. Party for you? Um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, new guy, new guy won. He'd been at the shop for like a month and I was his boss and he's like, Hey Gene, what's up? I'm like, you're a brand new A1C at a school. I don't care that you call me Gene. I'm not that kind of guy, but you could at least try and act <laughs> like we're in the military. I, I'm right? supposed to be that guy. Right. Yep. And, and then, uh, other guy, David, um, I was the sponsor coming in. He came in like a month later and like, Hey, uh, you know, meet me here at the BX, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm in this car parked in the parking lot. And he's like, okay, I'm in this car. I'm just pulling up. And like, uh, I see his car pull up. So I get out, I walk over to him. He like gets out of his car and like goes to parade rest in civilian clothes. I'm like, dude, <laughs> calm down. I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> next, to the, next supervisor I meet, I'm fucking doing that. <laughs> um, but, but it was the, uh, like some people embrace the military and some people don't. And it reflected in, in some performance. Um, but both, again, both highly capable now NCOs and people and, and whatever. But, uh, other dude went to Korea and then bounced around the world and and, and then uh, uh, David and I were stuck at at Beale together for like another four or five years and uh, we we grew really close. Um, it was solid solid guy, great yeah. human being. Um, was always there to check me, but never like in a supportive way. Like if I was doing, if I was making a bad decision, he wasn't he wasn't one of those EOD guys who was like, "Hey asshole," um, he'd be like. You know, he'd be soft. He'd be taxful. He would parade he, rest. He would find no, no. <laughs> um, he grew out of that, like you know. But um, no, nah, he. Uh, but he, yeah, he, he's he's a solid dude. We we go way back. He's definitely one of my ride or die dudes. Yeah, I can tell just by that interaction. He he's probably a phenomenal worker. Like oh, someone yeah. who's willing to get out of the car and do that. Like yeah, just that action alone speaks so much. It's it's cheesy and like yeah. it's an easy thing to target and make fun of someone. Yeah. But I know, like, we have a tech sergeant that does that. Every time, he's the only tech sergeant in the entire facility that does it. When a senior NCO talks, he goes to parade rest. And it's like, that's a really cool that you do that. Like, such yeah. a fundamental thing that nobody does anymore. Right. But he does. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's talk about the... Uh, Grish. Grish. Um, is that the last name? Yeah. Well, Grisham is Grisham, the last okay. name. Yeah, he... Uh, 
So I, this was back when the wars were kicking off and my very first supervisor pool. Um, Cause uh, I got a supervisor and then he deployed and then the guy filling in for him deployed. And, <laughs> um, but uh, Grish was like the first supervisor that kind of made an impact on me and like took me under his wing. What and base were you at? Nellis. Okay. So this was your first base. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, uh, uh, before yeah. you keep going about Grish, yeah. he first supervisor sounds like he was at least your third, took you <laughs> under his wing. What did he do? How do, how do, how does, how do I, if I was a new supervisor, take someone under, under my wing? <sighs> Tolerate the kid. <laughs> you little fucking eighteen year old asshole. I, I feel like that. Well, so I wasn't. I wasn't a problem child, but I was. I was. Uh, I was. Uh, he in, he inherited a mess. So I came out of at a EOD school at nineteen and change years old, and uh, five months at my first duty station got a DUI. Oh, like two months later, um, or a couple months later, I got orders to Osan, and that supervisor left PCS or deployed. I don't remember, so I got a new supervisor. And then that new supervisor basically deployed instantly. And then Grish was my supervisor until I, I left like six or eight months later. But um, it's a huge impact in six months. Oh, yeah. 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 No. Um, and, and we've, it's a small career field. So, like, I've, I've ran across him TDY a bunch of times and we stay in contact. And um, he, he's one of those dudes who's, uh, he'll never not tell it to you straight. Like, he'll never blow smoke up your ass. But um, he's very uh, charismatic, communicates super well. And, uh, like he, he knows how to, how to get what he needs from people while giving them what they need. Like he balances the, uh, win friends and influence people, Good book. uh, like extremely well. Um, like, and he, like, do you want to go like put, put, put some straw in your mouth and go like fish in and like, do, he, he can do that. And like, do you want to go to like you know, um, a black tie affair and like know all the etiquette rules. Like he's got that on lock. Like he's, he's like multidimensional can do anything. What's kinda. something he sucks at? Um, hmm. Oh fuck. That's a, I, that's what I want. I want to die where people can't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> the guy could do everything. I like, I, I wouldn't say he can do everything. Um, ice skating. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen him do like super athletic stuff. Like he's in good shape, but I haven't seen him like be like all about sports. Yeah. 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 That's a guy I can't respect. Well, I wouldn't say he's, I wouldn't say he's like Tom Brady, you know, yeah, well, not many people are. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's cool. Cause whenever I try to think of who my best friend is and who my top mentor is and like, what are the difference between those two people? Cause those are the people I think I gained the most from. And so for you to pick a dude from 16 years ago, that, that's that's phenomenal. Does he know that? Yeah. Is he is he retired now? No, he's still in. Is he a chief then? Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. How many EOD chiefs even exist? Um, I don't know about fifteen. That's not very many. Um, th- there's a f- there's probably up to twenty with ones that have gone up to be group supers or command chiefs. Yeah. 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 So yeah, not many at all. Yeah. Hmm. You think you think Sherry will be content with what you said today in the last hour and 10 minutes? Yeah, I don't think I I didn't burn any bridges. <laughs> Let's burn a bridge. What else you got to say? Uh, I love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. All right, I was waiting sure you got that out. Yeah, yeah. No. No, yeah, this was this was uh relatively um Yeah. I don't want to say vanilla because then you're going to start throwing hate rockets at me. I won't. But um no, this like well, we yeah. don't have to end it if you yeah, I can keep going. Yeah, now tell me something. Tell me something. The most interesting thing you have about Gene Tashida. Oh, boy. Let's start with this. Moment that changed your life. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll turn it back. Uh, so the guy um, that I walked over in Afghanistan, right? Um, there was, there's, I've had many life-changing moments, um, but a, a big one that I, I don't talk about often at all. Um and this this ties into uh, I mean, what I was saying about like getting uh, accolades and like praise and stuff a little bit too. Um, so he uh, we were clearing a compound one day and he uh, he stepped on a landmine, blew his leg off. Um, uh, 
like it was it was a rough day uh spent uh spent almost an hour on the ground um keeping him from bleeding out uh before Pedro showed up and took him home um then uh like brought him back to to the mob and what, what's the mob main operating base it was a big big base in Afghanistan I'm just not gonna name um and then uh uh yeah you know like hung out for a little bit talked to the team like it, that was uh like there's a few like again there's there's little scenarios that you that you remember like there's parts of that day that are just like black or white or whatever my memory does to it but it's not there and then there's things that I shouldn't remember but do um like I, I came back to the shop and basically uh that was a that was an incident so we had to go do the uh, we had to send a team to do the job that the, we were there for and mm-hmm. then also that team had to basically investigate what happened to him because we were basically doing all the uh the uh CLS stuff uh life saving and uh so i had to i had to brief them um on the on everything that had happened uh layout of the compound and where everything went down at and everything so that was that was hard just getting those thoughts out because i was still dealing with you know it was starting to overwhelm me because yeah. like when you're in the moment you're not thinking about what's happening you're just trying to fix find a problem and fix it find a problem and fix it and then uh like after things had slowed down i was like chain smoking cigarettes and you know and then like i uh i looked down and like i uh we were wearing the absg uh uh fire retardant air force combat uniform um tiger stripe um combat shirts and like that that's one of the bigger frustrations i could go on about frustrations about dress and appearance for some time but that it was uh like hey you guys are only allowed to wear that outside the wire you're not it's not a daily uniform i'm like we're deployed to afghanistan like get fucked yeah calm down and uh so I look down and I'm just like, uh, like I'm covered in blood. Like, um, like I, I could wring it out of my sleeve and, um, I'm like, I need to go wash this out. And, uh, like I, there was a little, uh, chew bathroom next to our tent. So I walk out there and, uh, I'm like spending probably way too much time just staring in the mirror cleaning my face off, cleaning, cleaning everything up, trying to like wash my sleeve out while, while the shirt's still on me. And, uh, I'll never forget. I don't remember the guy's face. I remember he was a senior. Um, he like walked in, was like waiting in line to take a piss because everybody's just in and out. Like while I'm, while I'm sitting there having this moment and he's like, you know, that's not an authorized outer garment. And you got blood all over you. Yeah. <laughs> and like, that's one of those things. Like I, I like I've envisioned turning around and murdering that person like a thousand times. Yeah. Right. Like that was just poor form. Um, whether yeah. he knew it or not. And that, that's one of those things is like care about the care about the right things. That's, you know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add that to my leadership philosophy. No, that's um, really good. I am. I wasn't trying to end it. And I'm so glad you said that. Cause yeah. that is they're like, why? Like I, I, Man, this what I'm gonna say is nothing compared to what you just said. But I struggle to correct people on those little things because mm-hmm. I just know that I don't know what they're thinking of in their head in the moment. Mm-hmm. And to correct someone on their uniform when there's blood all over, like what a, a moronic, simple-minded person to even think, oh, this is the right time to do that. Yeah. And, and I mean, uh, it very well could have been somebody who thought I was just like. And, and I mean, I don't know what my back looked like, you know, or how much he saw of that. Um, there was still like bloody water and stuff all over the sink, but who who knows what he was able. He might have just seen like, you know, shoulders up and uh, uh, made made a comment because he's trying to be a senior NCO, or whatever. Just, um, put, just put senior on. I was like, oh, my moment. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Well, but, so how did you respond in that moment? I didn't say a word. I, I couldn't I couldn't manage to say a word I was I was I was in shock um I was uh I, yeah I just like looked up and like gave like a I I acknowledged that you said something and then like then I started to like feel the feel the hate burning yeah. and I like just your like, mind switched to what was actually going on to this yeah. fucking guy yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly and so I uh yeah I went back to the shop and just kind of cooled off and then went and visited Dave in the uh in the hospital there uh before he uh he got sent back to Germany and eventually the states dang I yeah. did not know that yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. Um, I mean, I've had, I've had a lot of friends who, uh, who've been injured and, uh, have gone through a lot of traumatic, uh, stuff, but, um, yeah. So I, I, uh, we, like a- after that deployment, I went and took leave. I was stationed in Italy, went back to, um, uh, DC and visited him and Walter Reed. And, uh, we kind of, we kind of formed that bond of like, like n- nobody else was really there right there. Um, there was an army medic who helped out for a while. Um, but we never unfortunately got his information. Like he just like helped out and then left. And yeah. like, I tried to help him with that for a while, but, um, yeah. Uh, but no, we're, we're pretty cool now. Um, but uh, again, that's another thing is, uh, and, and like, I can only imagine the guys who get silver stars or medals of honor or whatever. Like I got, um, you know, like I, I, I got a medal for that. I got, uh, c- coined by uh three star coined by this guy and this guy and this guy. When I was visiting him in, uh, Walter Reed, uh, chief master in the air force, uh, Roy came okay. by and he was just doing the round seeing airmen. And, uh, Dave's like, Oh yeah, by the way, this is the dude who, uh, saved my life. And he like slips me a chief master in the air force coin and like all that stuff. And I was just like, I was tired of getting thank yous from doing what I consider like, what w- would you have just like, Hey, your buddies, they're bleeding out. You're going to let them die. Like, you know, so like, I, I feel like that's, it's a normal response to an abnormal situation. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but you know, like it, it got tiresome and annoying to people were like, it, you know, they they were like praising the situation rather than me. It, like I overanalyzed the shit out of did, it. Did because I think having heard that story, I didn't know I didn't know that about you prior to here. Mm-hmm. I've known you for eight months now. Didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, even if I, I don't, I'm not that important, but if I was a three star and I, and I meet some dude who doesn't have a leg and he's like, "This is the guy that made me here today," I don't know how I would like look at you and just be like, "Good job." I would have to give you the best recognition, like because that's something most of us don't deal with. I would have to give you a coin and like, and me, you know, to you, you're like, I don't know how to handle this. It's like, what else could that person have done? That was the best thing they could do in that moment. Uh, no. Yeah. No. And I, I don't, I don't like, and not specifically that, like, uh, yeah. I mean, what else? Like that, that was a totally, totally appropriate response yeah. to that situation and all that. But like, it was the, uh, it, it just, from my, from my standpoint, I didn't, I didn't like that Dave lost his leg. Yeah, that's the priority. So, so like, I, I, I just found a way to turn everything back to that. Yeah. You know, and, and that was that was maybe one of my ways of, like, avoidance. Like, if I can apply some emotion or anger to this situation, then, like, it, you know, it'll keep me from dealing with whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's a really good story, and I, and I wasn't at all trying to end it. I had, I had hit all my questions that I think I needed. And I still want to fucking talk and anything you want to share. I'm going to pour a little. I'm going to do a half and half, see what that tastes like here. Oh, okay. You can join me in that? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, because the next yeah. next, okay, so next question I'm going to ask you is, how are you willing to do a half and half with Coca-Cola? Nah. <laughs> I, won't even get that one. I wouldn't do that to you. No, I'm good. No, but that that story is, it's... It sounds selfish to say, and we talked about the selfishness earlier before we started this. Like, that's really why I want to do this. Like, hearing you share that story isn't something you, I've known you for eight months. You haven't shared that. You've been to ALA uh, with 24 different students over 16 weeks. You've never shared that. Oh, yeah. And that's one of those stories a lot of people in the military, especially in the Air Force, can't relate to or have ever experienced Cause I'll be honest, if one of my best friends, I have these, I was a three level with these nine dudes and we still talk to each other to this day. If that happened to one of them, I couldn't even imagine like my thought process, how I would think. And then when I'm in the bathroom crying and some assholes like, Oh, look at your uniform. I I don't know how you didn't hit the dude. I'm a small dude. And I would have fought him for that, especially being younger and more athletic. Yeah. Uh, so selfishly again, like I said, that's why I did this podcast is to like hear these stories and, and, I'm sure you're going to be cool with me sharing that. And I yeah. really want to, cause people can learn a lot from that. Yeah, that's fun. Um, no, so, but that's another thing too, is like, that's why I love, uh, leadership books. That's why I love yep. studying psychology. It's like the brain chemistry, the body chemistry, all that stuff. Like I never, ever once, like I, I've had my fight or my fight or flight reflex kick in a pile of times. Um, but that was the first huge adrenaline dump, like sustained long adrenaline dump. Um, 
like like we we were on the ground for 53 minutes before uh Aravac came in i helped carry him out of there uh threw him on the bird and then like went back and got all of his stuff so i was carrying like his body armor and his pack and all my shit way back to the truck because it was like a, a drive to dismount operation um and uh so like i was smoked like i I would like I was sore like I got the piss kicked out of me for like an hour by you know like some MMA dude like I for the next couple of days because my body just like dumped everything like I had nothing in my muscles no nothing and I was coming down from that when that guy was talking to me so like I, th- there was like psychologically speaking I was like I mean I I wish I'd have turned around and just just destroyed him but you know would have felt good really good at the moment (laughs) yeah maybe he would have learned a lesson and not done that again i i probably like i I probably wouldn't have gotten in trouble for it Um, oh wouldn't have (laughs) probably not yeah Yeah, you probably wouldn't have yeah um but that was another cool thing too is uh uh just around that situation there's a lot of small like mini lessons um but like i was raised roman catholic um and like I'm very logical and, and I like to analyze everything and ask questions and ask questions. And if it doesn't make sense, then I'm going to lose interest or not respect yeah. it. Right. Um, and so, uh, like I was, I did, as long as I lived in my parents' house, I had to go to church every Sunday and did that. Uh, I went to church once in boot camp, and that was about it. Um, but a lot of, uh, military chaplains, like never really, never really resonated with me. Um, I've met a few over the years, uh, who've just been phenomenal people and, uh, really, really emotionally aware and connected and like, just got it. Um, but the, uh, the chaplain, um, came to hang out after that incident and I was like, Oh, here we go. I got to listen to some guy talk to me about some shit. And, uh, uh, it was an army army captain and, this guy was super awesome. Like j- that was the first time. And, and that's, that's that, that connects like a lot of the conversations from yeah. tonight is because like never draw a line in the sand and say, these people suck. Um, don't be so, you know, like get out and know people because eventually you're going to meet the good ones. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and like this guy just like, he, he like, Hey, there is some good in this pool. Don't think they're all bad because of X, Y, and Z. Um, like he was, uh, he was super on point. He had, uh, he was like a former enlisted infantryman. So he had shared a lot of crazy experiences. And, um, so he had, he had credibility. Um, and he, uh, he was like, man, if you don't want to talk about it, I don't care. That's, that's probably um, the key right there is what made you want to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> you don't he's, care if I talk to you? like, yeah, like, I mean, if you need anything, let me know. Uh, I can go get you something from the chow hall, uh, you know. And he was just there to help me as a human and, and, and like, took the religion aspect yeah. out of it, which made, like, the situation totally good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really like that because that's how I feel like handling any kind of stress is the best way to handle it is to just treat it like it's a normal day. Like, dude yeah. wasn't trying to impress you. He wasn't saying, you need my help today. And I'm going to mentor you into that help. Like he didn't do that. He just, yep. yeah, one of my, one of my favorite things to do, and I've, I've done it only uh, once total is when I know someone does need to talk or need help. I, I, I usually know a, cha- a chaplain's name on base. And instead of like, if let's say it was you and I just knew you needed something, I'm not just like, Hey Gene, let's go talk to the chaplain. Like you would be like, you'd be hesitant. And as a man, you were always resistant to like taking any kind of help. Like we just kind of do that. Like it's a thing. Yeah, we are. We, we don't want help from people. We, we don't want to, lose our masculinity from it. It's, 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 it's embarrassing. It's out of politeness. We just don't want to bother them. Yeah. And I, I <laughs> and like, I'd be even as I'm saying this, I would be embarrassed to say, I need help with anything. It's just something I never want to do. Uh, so something I always do is like, if you need I, uh, a chaplain here is Greg. And I would just be like, you know, Gene, me and my friend Greg are going to have lunch. Let's go come with us, you know? Yeah. And it's like kind of, I guess it's, it's not really, I don't want to make it sound sneaky, but it is like nice to, if I invite you with lunch with Greg instead of with the chaplain, you're like, okay. And, and I always, that's like my a go-to way to get people to do that. Yeah, and it tells nothing to, to like your stories. And I really hope you have more that you're willing to share because I those, those last two are phenomenal. How's Dave actually doing? Uh, he's good. What's um, he doing now? Uh, he uh, he kind of stayed in for a while. Um, and then he 
eventually retired as a tech, I believe. How, what do you mean he stayed in afterwards? He stayed in? Like, I guess I'll just be honest. You can have... Yes, you can totally be in the military and be missing a, a leg. And right. still do an EOD? Yep. That's awesome. And he did... How many years did he get in total? Uh, he was probably... We came in... We were at EOD school at the same time. Um, he was probably right around 10 or 12. Okay. Um. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. Ten or twelve. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. There's a there's a guy. Uh, hell, maybe he's still in. He was one of the uh, the first or second um, Purple Heart that we had from Iraq back in '04. Um. He, uh, I think he's still in as a senior mass sergeant. Um. Lost his leg. Um. There, there's there's yeah there's a fair amount of people with uh battlefield injuries that choose to stay in. Some of them choose to get out. Um, I, I think Dave's injuries just be like, they were, they were a bit too much. Like he tried to stay in and rehab it over time. Um, they, they, uh, um, got him a spot at our schoolhouse. So he was an instructor. So oh, it wasn't operational as a civilian now or, Oh, as, as, a, as active, okay. as active. And then I, he decided to retire from there, but he, uh, he moved back home. He's, he's not far from his folks. He lives on a golf course. He's a dad now. Uh, he's he's living the good life. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, but good people. And I, yeah, that's awesome. Man. And and I hope Dave listens to this and, and like knows a, at least a bunch. Uh, I'd say at least a hundred people are gonna listen to this. So you know, and and learn from his story because that shit like that is amazing. And, and that's your best friend. You still talk to him? Uh, we we talk like quite one a bit. Of your best friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That's um, awesome. And that was the thing is uh, we were we weren't super close. Um. And and then that that day happened, and uh, that kind of that kind of forced it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it was one of those things, like uh, you know, like nobody else. Yeah, it was a unique experience we both shared. Um, probably, we, I mean, I, we both wish it hadn't <laughs> sure. happened. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, definitely one of those things that uh, like and, and like there's, yeah, there, there's a lot of a lot of dynamic. Um, complex emotions and thoughts tied to all of that. Yeah. And I, I'm, I want to ask you another question and feel free to not answer it. it. Okay. Like just another one of like the worst experiences of your life, whether military or before military, just if you're with this open, this is where people learn the most. I don't know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't even like, I mean, correlate that to being another one of the worst. Like it, yeah. it was a bad, it was a bad day, but a good experience. You know, it, does that make sense? Yeah, oh, no, it does. Uh, yeah. I um, guess I was thinking in Dave's shoes. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely definitely a bad day for Dave. Um, nah. Uh, man. And not 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 really on that level. Um, so, like, combat-related stuff. Like, I've been, uh, been in a pile of firefights. I was a heat cas once. Uh, that was embarrassing. Um, was heat, heat casualty? Yeah. Okay. Um, that was, that was super embarrassing. Um, I'm not going to get into the operational specifics of that, um, that particular mission, but, um, long story short, it was a early start and I should have gotten sleep, but I was busy like looking at, looking at routes, checking out Intel, all this stuff. And I, uh, I just neglected my own self care and, uh, I was like running on stimulants. So when everybody was getting like a, a pre- pre-mission meal i was like chain smoking cigarettes and like smashing a monster um didn't work out in my favor and so like into the next day around around time when we were walking through the desert um trying to leave like i don't know it was like six or seven miles through the desert um in may uh really really hot afghanistan um yeah i just like my body decided to give up and it was horrible uh, that was that was an embarrassment um, because uh, I was a, I was a team leader and how uh, old were you at that time? Twenty six. Yeah, that's young too for a team leader. Oh yeah, yeah. I was uh, and it wasn't because I was out of shape. It was because I, I the last thirty six hours prior to that, I just made stupid decisions, mm-hmm. and that was uh, that was the the biggest thing that upset me. Um, but I, I felt like I let my team down. Um, Thankfully, it didn't like impact us operationally. It was on the way out, and nothing nothing was really going on at that point. But uh, yeah, no that that was a huge a huge gut check and uh, a place to learn a thing or two. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I made a 
man, I made leader, leadership mistakes and uh, communication mistakes and girl mistakes and parenting mistakes and husband mistakes and like life's full of lessons, man. I, Gene, I agree. And like mistakes. I, so it's, I hate, I, I admit this a lot. So maybe I don't hate it, but I, I, I've been saying that a lot lately is I've been journaling for almost three years now. And anytime I fuck something up during the day, I write it down. Like honestly, even I'm like, yeah, even recently there's something just happened between us not that long ago that I fucked up and I was like, I need to write that down. I can't believe I just fucked that up in this conversation. Um, but, but when you make a mistake and you can reflect on it and, and admit it, you just, it's, it's very unlikely to re to, to admit it again. And, and that's why I like admitting mistakes so much. Yeah. And, and been, being married for seven years. Yeah. I'm sure I, I'm not trying to talk about your guys in marriage, but there's been mistakes probably left and right. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, 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 like life changing ones. No, like I'm a, I'm a giant piece of shit mistakes or anything yeah. like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, communication. Like, uh, like I was saying the other, other day at ALA, like, uh, relationships, professional or personal, mm-hmm. like, uh, a lo- you cause yourself a lot of heartache by not communicating thing, not communicating things that need to be communicated yeah. or communicating them in an incorrect manner or fashion. Yep. So, um, yeah, uh, th- there's definitely, that's that, but that's like, I think that's, that is universal marriage problems. Sure. Um, because it's it's about spending day in, day out with another human being, like forever. Yeah. And uh like And taking care of these two human girls yeah, together. Right. There's some stress there's some stress associated with that. And like you have to like when two people are having a bad day every day for a week, like who gets the break first? You yeah. know? Like it, it, when somebody vents and you know, and the it does the other person reply with a Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Or does the other person reply with, uh, well, I had to do, Ooh, you know what I mean? Option one is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to play Monday but, quarterback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Option but, one is the way to do but, that. But you learn. And, and yep. like, yeah, it, it's a, it's a struggle. Um, I don't want to say it's a struggle. Marriage is, yeah. marriage is awful. But no, it's great. Uh, I love being a dad. I love being married, but, uh, it's definitely, uh, helped me grow a lot yeah. in terms of patience, empathy, communication, um, a lot, a lot of different, like, uh, being an adult skills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so I should ask you, have you read this yet? But because you're married to someone who is prior military, I know you've read it. The five love languages. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and, and I can't believe we're here right Guess now. Guess who too. recommended <laughs> I read it? Wait, yeah. Tell me who. The My child. wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe right now we're two grown ass men talking about the fucking five love languages, but let's like, uh, just off that one story of meeting the, uh, your airman and he came out in, uh, at parade rest. Yeah. I've also read the book and I've realized how much I can learn from it. Uh, just as a man, don't want to admit that. Sure. I bet your love language, I've got a 20% shot here is acts of service. I hope I'm wrong, but what is it? Do you know? I, I don't know. Okay, what do you think it is? I think I'm gonna try to name them. Unless you, do you know? Do you know what yours is? No, I read this book like four years ago. Dang, and, and Sherry doesn't make you read it every month. No, but she's gonna start after she sees this. <laughs> yeah, don't don't let her see it. It's an option for you. Uh, I th- I'm gonna try to repeat the five, and if I miss one, let me know. Acts of service, words of affirmation, receiving gifts, physical yep. touch, yep. help. Sounds right. Yeah. Oh, there's one more. One, oh, there's one more. I don't know what it is. That's five. No, I said four. Acts of service, physical touch, receiving gifts, words of affirmation. Help. Help's not one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. saying help, help me. <laughs> well, there's one more, and I don't know what it is. I, you know, I've got to Google. I've got to use the old do it. cha-cha. Do it. That's, uh, Which one do you think? This shows how much I retain from that book. You know, three drinks will do that to you. Oh, that's funny. Love. Oh, uh, I I literally searched five and love languages came up. Google's listening to us. Oh man, uh, what are they? Discover your love language. Oh wait, five love languages. So after those four, it wasn't one of those four. What? Help. Oh no, help! Well, help's not one of them. <laughs> oh jeez, Google's not helping. I'm gonna go images. They just they give you the answer quick. Find a meme. <laughs> yeah. So, as I'm looking this up. I'm going to share the story. And you know what? I'm going to share the story. You attempt to find it with my phone. Okay. Don't search my browsing history. Yeah, no, no. no, no. <laughs> you're good. Uh, so there, we've had this, this 
I'm a, a rec. So my job here is air traffic control training manager, and I just have to try to motivate people to to want to do their their training. Man, I should just give it to begin with. And and they just keep messing this one thing up. They erase task start dates. No one uses paper records but us. And so I'm like, how do I get people to stop doing this? So I created a meme competition where all the people create a meme on like how Taishu gets upset when you erase your task start dates. And there's been like so many <laughs> entries. And it's like, this is the way to speak to kids. Did you create it deliberately or yeah. they created uh, well, it because of you? So two of them made one without my consent and posted it, yeah. insulting me. And then instead of like <laughs> trying to take it personal, I was like, you know what? This is a thing. Let's do this. I'll buy I'll buy the winter lunch and he can bring two friends or dinner. And so now like all these people are submitting these memes on why you should never erase your task start dates and paper records in the Air Force. And it's like this is like working. Because now everyone like three people a day came to my office. Hey, what do you think about my meme? And it's like, how do I get people this excited? If you want to get people that are born in nineteen ninety six or further? Earlier. Earlier. Sooner. Tell them to do a meme competition. <laughs> like, they are so into it. And it is probably one of the coolest things. So, here's what I forgot. Receiving gifts. Nice. Yep. Oh, no. Quality time. Yep. Quality Words of time. affirmation. So, Gene, what's your love language and what's Sherry's love language? What? Words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, acts of service. My love language... I don't like this conversation. Uh, we, it's probably, we can change it. Probably physical touch okay. and hers. It's very th- masculine. Hers, I think, is uh, uh, acts. Uh, it's either quality time or words of affirmation. I think quality time. If yeah. I, and this is going to sound like not a great like, sexist isn't the word, but I feel like a lot of women are quality of time. Like the last three girlfriends I can think of, that was their thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I also, or maybe, maybe that's because that's the thing you're most efficient in giving. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I don't think I am. Yeah, of course. I'm very a physical toucher. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. If if their if their love language is X, mm-hmm. maybe it's because when you were with them, they needed X and you weren't giving it enough. That's fair. You know what yeah. I mean? If that was the observation, may. You know, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm just now. You should have the PhD, not Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but I also agree. Like, I I brought that up, and then I was like, oh, this is kind of a weird topic. But let's see where it goes because it, it is like it's like the the science and like knowledge is there for this for this topic. Yeah. But most men are like, oh, I don't want. I don't fucking read that. <laughs> it doesn't interest me. Like, right. Let me just tell you about how I take girls out on a date. Yeah. But now, um, yeah. Like, the the term "happy wife, happy life" is like slightly offensive to me. Um, like, that just means I don't get to be happy. Like, ha- like how how does this work? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Like, I didn't sign up to have just like commit a life of of like degradation and like sadness. Um, <laughs> Please continue. You know? this. this is good. Um, you hear, I hear military men hear that all the time. I literally I've never heard anyone say. Don't agree with this. Yeah. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Happy wife, happy life. Like, uh, so there's obviously like if your wife, if your wife is upset, you are not having a great day. Right. Yep. That's, but if you're upset, you're not having a good day. Your wife's probably not having a good day. You would hope so. Um, so yeah, like it, it's a, it's a empathetic exchange, um, to a, to a degree. So yeah, keeping each other happy is a goal of marriage. But the phrase, like, in its simple form is, like, suggests that man is responsible for wife's happiness at all costs. Otherwise, he will pay the price. That is an in-depth way to look at that phrase. Right. Like, I can't I can't find a flaw in there. Maybe if, I, if you gave me 10 minutes to think <laughs> right. of one, I could. But, yeah, that's. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I like that. I got an, I got a question I really want to ask you. Send it. You've been married for seven years. How long have you known Sherry? Oh, that's a good one. That's, that's not the question. That's How long have you known her? Um, oh, yeah, like, go with that, and that then was, I will ask that, my question. That was a question. Well, I'm going to say my question just in case I forget it. 18 years. Holy shit. Yep. You knew for 11 years before you got married? Yep. That That's fucking cool. When, and, and your oldest is six. Okay. Dang. 11 years. Yep. You met her at Nellis? No. Nope. Where'd you meet her at? EOD school. 
Oh, shit. Tech school? Yeah. So you weren't an average tech school marriage, get married now. You no. married 11 years later. No, I uh, I bounced around the world and did uh, work and single guy stuff. She bounced around the world, found a man, got married, got unmarried, and then ran into me. So. Lucky her. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought of like three different questions to ask off there, so I'll go with this. Before you met, no, you know what? Since you've met Sherry, best like date idea you've had like what what is like the greatest idea you've come up with to take sherry and like make her feel good because i have to say this to anyone who hasn't caught this on through listening to this is sherry was also eod which is extremely rare i don't know how many women there's EOD a, people there are there's not many yeah it, i could imagine it yeah. being a very rare rare thing yeah uh so i'm sure she you know like marrying an eod woman has got to take a very confident person uh so f- obviously if you were able to to make that happen, you've got some great date ideas for us guys who aren't as <laughs> successful as you. Share those with us. Uh, um, so we uh, we had two mutual friends, Mark and Christine Brady, who uh, were also EOD techs who were getting married. Oh, awesome. Um, and Sherry knew both of them. She was stationed with them. I was uh, at Osan with Mark. Um, what year was this? In 2006. Okay. In 2006, I was with Mark at Osan. They got married in 2012 in Mark Sac- and Kristen. Mark yeah. and Christine in uh, in Sacramento. I was at Beale. She was in Vegas. Uh, she was recently divorced. So I was still doing single guy stuff. Uh, we both got invited to the wedding and kind of hooked up after that. Um, uh, you know, and then uh, her birthday was at some point after that five weeks i'm good with dates five or six weeks (laughs) and sherry don't listen to the first 20 minutes of this podcast yeah um and so uh uh we want we wanted to hang out again and i was like why don't we just go to napa and so uh i we got a uh got a room at a place in napa and uh your first date was in napa yeah that's fucking cool. Yeah. Most people can't do that. We had a good time, like three or four days in Napa Valley, uh, doing wine stuff and seeing the sights. That was a good yeah, time. That is, that's not what I would recommend to like meet a girl and then say, let's do this. But that's fucking cool that it worked out for you. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys got, I guess you got married relatively shortly after that. Um, Six, and I guess like five years later. Yeah, we were dating, dating in the fall of 12 and got married in the spring of 14. So like a year and a half together. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's been the best I, best date, best thing you've come up for her since you've been married? The best date? Yeah, like the, or not date, but like thing you've done for her since. <sighs> I'm just trying Man, to steal all you're, your ideas. You're gonna you're gonna make me point out what a horrible husband I am. Okay, we can edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so, an option. So I'll I'll tell you what, and I kind of alluded to it earlier. Like having kids, especially when we were mill to mill. Yeah, that was horrible. I was still stationed in another duty location. And she was a single mom for the first six months of our oldest daughter's life. So we weren't mm-hmm. even together. I just go visit every couple months. Um, oh, so it, you weren't even stationed with Camille when when she was born? Mabel. Mabel. Um, no. Um, yeah, it was a it was a struggle. Uh, and Sherry was like she was active duty EOD tech single mom, um, trying to trying to like go TDY and like do work and stuff. And, yeah. Like, figure out the CDC and figure out everything being a mom is without, without an extra set of hands. So I've got some guilt associated with that. Um, but yeah. And then I, we worked at PCS. So I got to Nellis and, uh, help, started helping out and I was like, teach me. Um, but like, then it comes down to like, we both get up at like quarter to five for work and PT and like taking the kids to the CDC and this, that, and the other. And like, well, I just got to bed. Like I woke up at, I didn't get to bed until 1130 because I was taking care of the kid. And then I woke up at one with the kid and got to bed at two. And then I woke up at two 30 and got to bed at three 30 with the kid. And now I'm waking up at four and like, you know, like it just absolute craziness. Yeah. Um, so like, like, Hey, you want to go on a date? Like, no, I want to sit. <laughs> I want to yeah. do nothing. Just watch this um, TV show with me. So it like, I, I think, uh, and maybe, maybe like we're like horrible people, but like, I kind of accepted it as a, like, this is what married life and parenting is, is devoting what you got to the kids and letting your relationship take a bit of a hit. Yeah. Because you can't, like, there's little things, 
you know, like around the house, like, Hey, you know, whatever. I love you. Like, Hey, I got you this like little thoughts, little gestures, but like the whole, like, yeah, we had this weekend at the spa. Like, that's not a thing when you got little kids. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but n- now that our kids are a little bit older, um, I can trust, like trust the kids not to kill themselves or we know more people with kids who we trust and can, can hang out with the kids. Like, we can work the, hey, like, yeah, you can watch our kids, all, you'll, you'll watch our, whatever. Um, little swapsies and, you know, because every parent's, everybody needs that. Yeah. Um, like, you need to, to focus on the relationship um, as well as parenting. But, so I said all that to say, uh, I there's a lot of opportunities I could have, I probably should have been better as a husband. Um, it was generally overlooked because we were both so exhausted. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Now keeping the marriage flame alive is, is a challenge for sure. Um, on both ends. If you're willing to share it, you've been out here for damn near 12 months uh-huh. through the COVID COVID pandemic. Yeah. How, how have you been able to keep that flame alive? Uh, just regular communication. Like, uh, except for tonight. Uh, you've got me neglecting my wife. Um, but yeah, Tuesday and Thursday nights, I call her and then, uh, we FaceTime once a week yeah. and, uh, we're, we're always texting and uh, sending pictures back and just keeping each other, uh, kind of like in tune with what we got going on in our day to day so we can be involved. Yeah. So something, something, another, and I'm just going to keep talking to you till you stop me, but so you, you, you had Mabel and yep. you had Camille yep. and you still give a fuck about all these airmen. Like how I feel like if I had kids, <laughs> my priority set. And I think a lot of people actually do that. They have kids and that's their priority and you can see it in their actions at work. Obviously, I don't see that in you. You know, honestly, if I didn't ever know you as a person, I would think you don't have kids. I would think that about you by the way you carry yourself, the way you work 16 hours a day. Kunsan makes, makes it a little specific because they're not here. And I know that. Yeah. But I bet you could agree with people's perception of you being that. Yeah. Even, even pace. I mean, we, I bet you, if I told pace, you had kids, my friend, Derek pace, He'd be like, wait, I think he calls you cheetah. <laughs> he would say cheetah doesn't have kids. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Um, I, and again, like I'm, so I know so many people. I try not to mimic personality characteristics that I don't like. I know so many people that. I want to hear some you don't like. I, I know a lot of people that just talk too much about themselves yeah. and their own exploits. I, and, yeah. And that, that like. Or, and that's, that also goes back to the recognition thing where people are like, Hey, look at this. Look what I did. Like, I'm, I don't like that. That's annoying to me. Um, so like, uh, like don't, don't, don't let that persuade you. If if you do something, tell me, I'll be happy for you. But that just lessons life has taught me. Um, there's some people that just overdo it and that, yep. that that's annoying. And so, I don't want to interrupt so, you, but there's this book I recently read yeah. and it talks about habits people do that piss people off. Yeah. And one is called living in the past and it's bringing up things you did before, like years ago. Like yeah. people, and if you're bringing up like people, if you, if I'll, I'll say it, Gene Tashita is a Levita winner. And if, if Gene Tashita reminded me all the time that he's a Levita winner, I'd be like, okay, I don't like you. <laughs> like I, just, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. think better of you. I would exactly. think worse of you. Exactly. And, and it's like, it's a common thing. Yeah. And I've like any, anyone that does it, you just think it. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. No. Continue. But like, it's a thing. No, you're spot on, man. Yeah. So, uh, let's get back. Yeah. Sorry. I, I shouldn't right. cut you off. You're, you're fine. Um, so people, where was I going? Help me out. You were talking about how you don't like to talk about your own recognition. Yeah. And we were also talking. How did that connect to my wife? I'm at, oh, yeah, yeah, kids. So um, I don't want to be like, hi, I'm a dad. Like, yeah. hi, hi, I'm EOD. Hi, I'm in the military. Like, I, I'd rather, like, if you're interested in telling me something about yourself, I'd rather know what that is and potentially find it interesting. And then have a conversation where there are relatable topics yeah. and be like, oh, as a matter of fact, me too. Um, I've got this situation. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, very much not the icebreaker guy who goes, hey, this is me and who I am. Um, so that's why, like, and, and yeah, definitely the work thing here. Like, I was, I was born to work. And so like, yeah, I, I've got, I've got this time away from my family and, uh, and I was having this conversation with my chief before I came out here 
And to here, like today? No, no, no. Um, oh, before you my chief out. at my previous duty location. Okay. And uh, uh, we were just kind of talking about this place because he was sitting in my seat in 2014. And uh, so he was like kind of giving me the what to expect kind of thing conversation. And um, he was like, hey, do this, don't do this. Like, don't get caught up in, in this and whatever. I'm like, look. I I just got back from a deployment. I just went on a two month TDY, and I'm about to leave my family for a year. Like, I have to look my kids in the eye and say, like, this is this is a thing Daddy's doing, and it's okay. In 20 years, I'm gonna have to justify my time away from my kids. Maybe not overtly, maybe not in a conversation, but still internally to me, I'm gonna have to look in my soul and be like, you. You did that. You you didn't fight the assignment. You didn't make up a broken knee so you didn't have to go to Kunsan so you could stay at home and be a good dad. You you just did your duty. And I just kind of kind of write that with myself as like again, it's my responsibility. It's my work. Um I'm not a selfish person and I'm not going to do that to somebody else and uh like so I figured if I'm coming over here I'm going to make this place as good as I can. I'm going to make the airmen around me as good as I can make them. I'm going to I'm going to invest everything that I can cuz like home where like I go to work and then I leave at 5, 6, 7 whatever. Um then I go home and not that being with my family is work, but it's effort. <clears throat> so like I'm putting out effort, you know, from 0, 05 to to 9 at night like every day. So, like, I feel like if I can give that when my family's back there, I can give that here. And I'm doing them justice by not neglecting my time here. If, if I just came here and, like, did it, did the 9 to 5 and got drunk every night and just, like, put my development in the, in the toilet, then, then I, would, I would feel very guilty for spending time, this yeah. time away from my kids. But uh, since I'm making it valuable for me and the people around me, I, at least I feel like I am, um, it, it's easier to stomach that, uh, that distance from the family. So I have to say this, um, and this is mostly just between me and you and anyone that listens, gets this far into it is going to hear it too. You, you just said that you did it just for like the people around me. And, and for me to be a dude, you randomly picked, like, I didn't know you too well when you were like, I want you to lead the next ALA thing. I'm going to be here for half of it, but you're taking it. You know, you could have easily, easily the amount of joy you get out of it, taking it, ran with it, and then pawned it off to someone at week seven when you leave. Yeah. Uh, but that you picked me for it. And then as soon as I got off quarantine, like I got to run it and like, this might mean nothing to you. It might mean a lot to you, but I've learned so much. Like having, being a young senior NCO and then having five cadres that are older than me outrank me and they have to come to me for things. I have learned so much just off of that because yeah. so far in my Air Force career, I haven't led people that outrank me. I've led people right. older than me, but that's this a, is the first time people that's that have a, been in for longer than me. Yeah. It's a situation. It is. Yeah. And, and I hope it, yeah. Like, and, and because you just randomly was like, I know you, I know Skylar Hunt was a phenomenal dude. And had he been here, he would have got the opportunity. Well-deserved. Fortunately for me, Skylar Hunt left <laughs> and you had to pick me. I was your number two, which I, I, that was so lucky because honestly this has, and even with ALA, this has been the worst assignment of my career. And it's number five. I just, man, I'm just in a closet. I'm just, this training. Yeah. And I'm not trying to get too emotional, but sure. And I won't, I'm a training manager and it's if for air traffic. You're the dude in the closet who just tells people, here's what you have to do. You're doing this wrong. I can't help you. I don't get to write your EPR. I don't do anything for you. Yeah. And I hate it. And it's, it's actually a conversation I had with my chief today. And so like, I was like kind of over being here. It was like eight, seven months in probably when you're like, Hey, will you do this? And you didn't know it at the time, but I was like, Yes. Like I know this managing of air traffic records and now you want me to do this. Like I have all the time in the world to do something I care about. I care about this. That's awesome. And I don't know how you knew I cared about this, but like you're influencing people and it was and easy that's, to see you cared about it. Yeah. And I didn't even get to teach a class. I was just there like watching and I, and every day I was like, you guys might tell me to stop coming. <laughs> you know, like I'm just fucking here and I save my little two minutes at the end. Uh, and so when, when, when you made senior man, like for, I just want you to know, and I hope I, I'm not trying to end this dude. I promise you, I, I want that. You have so many stories, but I have to get this in before it ends. It's like, man, I got you that bottle because 
you influenced me here. If I had to pick my top three influences for Kunsan, you'd be in the top three. You'd probably be in the top two. And and, and it was something you probably would have never known. 100%. Yeah, you probably. You wouldn't have known that. Probably you know, not. The, like, I am now, and if I go to Fairchild, ALA is not a thing. I want to start it. And that's going to be 12 to 24 to 36. This multitude of people yeah. that are going to get to know this because you just randomly picked some random fucking E7 that showed up to your class one day. You know? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't by accident. You're you're a smart dude, and you care, and you're insightful, and yeah, you don't cut yourself too short there. I appreciate that, and I and, and I do really appreciate. That. I think I'm so average, and I'm so dumb on so many things, and that's that's why I like it when people say that's like you know, and I, I know you hear it all the time. Uh, Pace has said it. Uh, Stallings, I almost forgot his name. I didn't. Uh, I, Dion Stallings, yeah. the medical master select, yeah. probably a master by now. Yeah was like that dude's gonna make chief you know everyone says that about you and so for you to like make senior it's like at, at 17 like now you've got a choice to make and we're all rooting for you so <laughs> whether you stay in and make it or not like you're doing a lot of things for people outside of eod and in a career field like that that's really fucking like unique yeah because people don't get out of their career field much that's true um i i find it like so as far as that goes man um, imagine it's it's diversification, like, and it's like what ALA does just getting out of my career field and like interacting with other people around the base helps me learn so I can take that back and make my unit better. You know what I mean? Like I can share different experiences, different ideas, different yeah. like like that. So that that's like, and I, and I try and like explain that to dudes. I'm like, get out and go make friends. Like, just because you yeah. show up to work with these people every day doesn't mean these are the people you have to spend all your time with. Like, you, like your best friend, maybe your soulmate, is 30 feet that way. It's so and you're easy, never yeah. going to meet them. But it's so easy to just coordinate with the people you work with because you're comfortable. Yeah. It's the tribal thing. Yep. But keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just I, had to say it. No, you're good, man. Um, but I, uh, I too, I, I've, I heard that from senior NCOs when I was younger, and I was like, yeah, but then I'd have to, like, talk to people I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I, I get the, get people being resistant to that. It makes total sense. But it, it's good for me, and ultimately it is good for the people who who I work with or surround myself with, like, um, just being able to get out and, like, continue to diversify the ideas that are in my brain. Um, and they make your ideas stronger, more validated. Perhaps, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw this is going to sound like a cheesy oh thing boy. to say, but man, I almost want to like when when I so I do a monologue for every podcast. That's my idea. I did one for uh, the last guy and you're number two and you're going to sign this thing afterwards, wherever you want. as right. number two. And then please put the number two on it when you do it. Uh, but something special about it. If this is like, man, the first 45 minutes were us and like, man, like this is like. The second half, like, I wasn't trying to end it. I just, like, didn't have anything to ask you. And you, like, spoke up and was like, whoa, this is vanilla. And that's what's fucking cool is, like, even in this environment that's recorded, you're like, well, this is, I had so much more to say. And it's like, well, like, yeah, let's share it. Yeah. And so, like, when I do my monologue, I already, uh, you didn't see it, but you saw that Word document I, I made you read. Yeah. Uh, so I had him read a Word document before this started about, like, what my podcast is about since he's episode two. And maybe he doesn't know. He probably he hasn't listened to any episodes yet. This is the second episode. I haven't published any. Um, but, but below that, you didn't read it. And I was talking about um, this guy named Josh Jacklin. Uh, he was a Levito winner, and I and being a Levito winner, uh, we met at Osan. He called me when I he called me Levy bro when he met me because he knew <laughs> I won Levito. And I was like, what? He like I was like what? like it was like in person or first like what's up, Lever bro? Is what this senior airman who just won Levito said to me. And it was like what? He's yeah. like. Levito winner. We're bros. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Like, I really like that. And and Gene will never talk about it. He doesn't like bragging about himself. But he's also a Levy bro. Mm -hmm. And and it's a big thing. And, like, there's patches here at Coonson that say Levy bro. I don't know if you have one or not. No. I'm buy you one. <laughs> but, like, you deserve one. Because it's, like, this award you get. And, like, you can't, you're proud of it, but you don't want to admit it. And, like, you can see it in yourself that you're one, you know, and it's just like, it's a really cool and it's a douchebaggy thing for anyone that gets here. Like, like, Oh, you guys just got lucky. You know, people don't, pe if I introduced myself to you, I was like, what's up? Levito winner. You'd be like, get away from me. You know, 
But it is this like cool, unique little brotherhood of like somehow your peers thought you were the best leader in that in that six week course. And so something I really want to ask you as someone who's who's been very successful in PME, how do you feel when you win those awards? Plural. <laughs> so you know I didn't win more than one Levito, right? Because you've introduced me yeah. as such. I wasn't I thought you won too. No. <laughs> I told you it was that was not true, and I think you thought I was trying to be humble, but yeah. it's actually not true. Which one did you win? ALS or NCOA? ALS. Okay. I got DG at NCOA. Wow. Top ten percent. Sure. Not one yeah. percent. So, so when you won at ALS, well, how did you feel? Like as a dude who never gets recognition, and now you're only four years in, getting a huge award. Everyone knows it's a huge award. How would you feel? So, like the weight of those awards, you don't really know what it is until I would say much until much. year eighteen on some backyard podcast yeah. where some dude's like, "What's up?" Yeah, no, it, it's like because. Uh, the Air Force is, I, I mean, like, there's there's legitimate leadership science behind recognizing people and complimenting people's performance and supporting people and being positive. And, like, if you did 60% good, I'm going to tell you you did 90% good. Sure. Because tomorrow you might do 70%. Be, like, it, there's science in, in all these things. And the Napoleon concept of, like, metals and, like, all that. Like, I, I that's very fun to read up on yeah, and it gives you interesting insight. And I'd love to hear your suggestions on something to read about that. Cause I haven't read much okay. on that topic. War is a racket, right? <laughs> Actually, time, 158, 56. <laughs> I, I will, uh, I, I actually have the book. I'll bring it to you. It's like a two minute read. It's tiny. Oh, perfect. Um, but no, uh, so, uh, where did we go? Okay. Um, so, you're inundated with a coin. Like, you're just like, hi, welcome to the military. Here's a coin. You're inundated with how many ribbons were on your chest when you graduated boot camp? Three or four. Okay. Did you, like, feel like you earned those ribbons? I, okay. Yeah. So, so Not really. The, the Air Force gives stuff to everybody, and you don't necessarily know the cut line of, like, am I getting more or less than other people? So, like, and specifically in ALS, like, how I felt about it in the moment. <laughs> um, we were overseas at Italy, uh, Aviano, when I went through ALS, and I had a buddy who's like, uh, hey, you need to practice your take-shake salute, okay? So, uh, <laughs> he'd like, here, all right, take, and he'd hand me a beer, shake, salute. That's how you got to teach people shit. <laughs> I remember and, and that. And so, over he, a beer. he fed me, like... Yeah way too many beers <laughs> i was trashed like i'm I don't, just gonna start doing that with everybody yeah <laughs> practice your take shake salute um rob randall that uh, is a great man good job rob you taught me something yeah um make sure he sees this yeah yeah well, minute two hour <laughs> <laughs> right holy crap um but yeah uh so like there's a bunch of people like congratulating me. I'm like, okay, 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 cool. Thank you. Thank you. Like I go up there, I get a coin from the command chief, get a coin from the commander, like picture, take shake salute. Great. Uh, commandant co comes over and coins me. And then like MSG commander coins me and my squadron commander coins yeah. me. And like, you know, my, my, my chief in shirt go, Oh man, great job. Oh, you're oh, awesome. The OPR, EPR bullet for them. Yeah, right. And like, I, I guess, um, but yeah, no, I, I was just like, okay, cool. I I just got a handful of coins and, uh, cool, thanks. Like I I don't I don't know I I just like it that kind of stuff like puts me it makes me feel awkward. Yeah, it's weird that you feel that way. Um, and like because uh, most people like they know what that is going in. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Most people know what that is going in, and they're all like, I want this, I want this, I want this. What you know, and and to to get it and that not affect you in that manner is it's unique. I guess. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it goes back to, you know, like how I was raised and stuff like that. Like the, like you work your ass off and you shut up and that's life. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and I'm most ALSs are 60 people. So like, I mean, that's something on your resume voted number one by my peers out of 60. Yeah. And, you know, that shit's, it's a big deal and I, I can see why it is, but, but just PME in general is what I really like about the air force is most like organizations don't have these like well, let's just send a bunch of people to go learn leadership. And, but the Air Force does that. And you, 
like I guess other people have to pay for leadership and we don't have to do that. We literally get these moments where yeah. we start, take some time off, learn how to lead. Yeah. Like work with people that you don't fucking know. Yeah. And you, I learned like both my experiences, ALS and TOA, uh, all of all the ALA classes I've been a part of, like I learned so much just by being thrown in these environments where it's, let's talk about these leadership topics. No one fucking talks about. Yeah. Man, there's so much to grow from that. And I, and I love that. I think that's something that I always want to be a part of. So uh, it's not really podcast worthy, but, um, no, it is. Uh, so last week I did a, uh, squadron superintendent course yep. here on base and that was uh phenomenal. The guys putting it on, it, it was great. It was, uh, it was like a uh, hybrid of like a couple of like PowerPoints on like, management stuff that you need to know that you might not have been exposed to yet. Um, Umper and finance and this, that and the other, but like, uh, it was almost like a, a hybrid, like three day senior NCO ALA to a point, like they, they were getting after some really good stuff. And I don't know. Cause there's like a 12 year master in there who is a squadron superintendent because of just the way their organizational breakdown is. I don't know if you, uh, if you have the opportunity, but you would, you should definitely go to the next one of those they put on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say no to that. I like those opportunities. But also, yeah, being a guy who's been in 12 years myself, I would struggle to, like, you know, as, as a human, you were fucking equals. Who are you to teach me how to do this? You know? And maybe that's what's wrong about me. But that's interesting. And, and so you, as at 18 years, learned from that 12 year and other. Well, that was a fellow student. Oh, okay. I thought that was like a, a the teacher of the course. No. Um, there was a, a chief. A chief and three seniors that were uh, the cadre, and like we had a chief mentor every day. Okay, that makes way more sense. I, yeah, I, yeah. I but no, like the, the peer group. Um, some people were like twenty-two year. There was a few seniors in the class, uh, mostly masters. But Did, like there were a couple of young masters that yeah. were like the the term superintendent is just funny. Like they use it and not how it's supposed to be used for twenty six eighteen, but. But they're like tiny squadrons in medical mm. um, to have a master as a squadron superintendent. And that's just like crazy to me. Yeah. it's and I mean, it is what it is. Like, obviously, it's it, it works for them, but it's just not normal to me. Um, but yeah, no. So like, I don't know, in your world, like if you were to like, if you were like, hey, I want to go to a superintendent's course, if they'd be like, okay, awesome. Or actually, Pace was there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Pace. Um, but uh or, or if they'd be like, uh, no, dude, you're like 20 years from being a superintendent. Go away. <laughs> so yeah. it, if it's an option, I recommend it. I would. Yeah, I, I never say no to things. And a lot of people think like those courses are cheesy. But if you just sit there and like realize there's things to be learned and people are, your, your paycheck is the same. There's so much to be learned. But it, it's, yeah. just, it's, not, it's fun and easy to be like, what a stupid waste of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that's the that's the Air Force thing to do is to yes. hate on good experiences yep. and not get the most out of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's because it, it's easy and it's easy and fun and people will, will join you in that. Oh and yeah, so that's what makes it easy. Yeah, I mean, I man, I've got nothing else to ask you. All right, but I've I've if you've got anything, man, I'm here for you. Want to do this again before I leave? We got what we got two weeks. Sure, I won't say no to that. All right. Ooh, or I like whiskey. Well, so you're number one, or you're number two. Wolf T was number one, and I offered him after it ended. I was like, anytime you want to come and just be like a surprise guest. Like think of like there's this there's this staff sergeant I work with who like he's he's been in for six years. The dude he got ALS Levito BTZ staff. He will make tech if he stays in. He won't be on the list. He's gonna test, but he won't be on the list. Dude's phenomenal. But he's like, man, I'm gonna get out. And then he's his I his plan. The dude's 23, 20, 24. I'm gonna say his name, James Langford. He'll be a guest on here. His plan is to get out and just like he met this girl on Tinder and he's gonna go to Bali to see her. Like that's his plan. And it's like, how are you like this? Like he just the dude's been to more countries than me, like and he's six years younger than me, but like like he's so interesting and I just wanna talk to him. Sure. You know? Yeah. And so like an idea like bringing someone like when Pace if he comes on here to have you just here with me or like it would just be a lot of fun to have like Wolf Chief show up and like talk to James Langford because Wolf Chief like Dude, you can't just like give up your life to me to check off Tinder in Bali, you know. So like, that's my idea with this is like interesting people. But anytime you want to do this again, whether yeah. it's a, I haven't figured out the Zoom call thing, but I'm down. Like, 
blowing stuff up with Gene version three. All right. <laughs> you know, because yeah. version one already happened. Yeah, man. But I'd really like it. Uh, anything you have to say before I hit the end button on here, man, please get it out. But um, one, one follow up on like crazy people. Uh, one of my homeboys that I was at Oson with. Um, 06? In 06, yep. yeah. Guy's name was Dan Peters. He, uh, he, he fell in love with uh, photography and video photography. And like the military just kind of wasn't his thing. And he like got out and he's like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to motorbike from like, uh, France through Russia, through China, down into India and just document it. EOD? Yeah. (laughs) Like, yeah, he like, dude, he, uh, he made like a, there's a web page. This was in like blogs were kind of a thing. Yeah. And like, I, I don't know where any of the content is anymore, but it was like, I, I like was checking up on him and like the pictures and the videos and like the people he met and like what an incredible experience, man. Yeah. Like he, he just went through like from West to East and like down into India and like the, the culture, the people, the poverty, like the, the smiles, the, like the joy, like that, that that's a, I really admire people that can be so yeah. free and live their life like that and just appreciate the little things. It's really cool. I 1,000% agree. Like when I think of James Langford, and what was your guy's name? Dan Peters. Dan Peters and James Langford. I hope James, if you're cool with it, we're going to work this out to where James hits Dan up before he leaves. And like just the idea, like you can just drop this career 14 more years of a relatively easy job you've already figured out and just go travel the, the world because that's what you're into. I didn't have the balls to do it. And I'm jealous of people to do it. And I would love to keep up with them to see how they do. Yeah. So Dan and James, like, man, like, yeah, you're, you're doing something. Some of the, some relatively successful people are, like, <laughs> jealous of. So they're doing something right. Yeah. But man, all right. So Gene, man, we got way longer than, than my, my, my goal was 60 to 90 minutes. And this was, like, so fucking good. And I'm so glad you, like, <laughs> didn't stop it when I thought it was over, man. Thank you for that. It's going to make me, I'm new to this This is my second interview ever and I'm learning. And so for like, and, and that's what I'm grateful for is I was like thinking it was over. I had nothing else left on my board behind you that no one can see to ask you. And you're like, well, this is vanilla. Well, I've got so much. I I hope fucking more people can do that. And, (laughs) and through that, I'm going to tell people before this thing starts is if you're not done, fucking tell me. And again, you've already given me ALA. You've made Coon sound a little better than I, I I thought it would be. You've taught me this through podcasting. You're a, I'll say it, you're a mentor of mine. Whether or not you knew that or not, you are. Thanks, I'm, I'm fucking pumped you made Senior. had no problem dropping 50 bucks on a bottle of liquor, and you saved it to share with me. Come tell me down. Oh, Kareem, for thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, this was Gene Jashida. If you would, look at that, because I have to make a thumbnail for us. Yep, and that's it. And if you have anything, you got the closing remarks. And when you're done, I'll hit the end button. Um, no, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, again, like this format, um, it's not just having a conversation, right? You can hear your you can hear your voice in a different, um, I don't, I don't know, pitch or you know, there's a better word for it, but yeah, um, it, you you can you can hear what you're saying the, the way other people might hear it, and, and like it makes you think differently, and it, it generates different conversation, and like. It puts you on the spot, but in a good way. And uh, so I appreciate you investing in this and wanting to do this um, for your own development and for others. And um, like just huge thank you for inviting me to be second only to uh, (laughs) throwback Wolf Chief Woods. Um, uh, It's an honor. Uh, It truly is. And uh, yeah, thanks for letting me ramble uh, and, and burn up your night, man. To all of those who made it to the end of episode number two of Have a Tai Podcast, thank you. I am still learning how to bring out the most interesting parts of my guests' lives through our discussion. Gene shared more than I was expecting prior to the podcast beginning. He was even kind enough to offer me tips on improving my next podcast that I'm going to apply. As always, please reach out to me with any suggestions on things I can ask future guests. This experience gets better for me and anybody who listens through suggestions and help. Gene, thanks again for burning your night away with me. Have a Taishi podcast is still growing and currently available on a few platforms. YouTube, Spotify, 
Hockey Casts and Anchor. Thanks for listening.